Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. Today, Nona and I are joined with Chris and Sarah. Um, for the viewers of the show, you probably just watched a really, really badass intro of a jet car. That's this guy. Partially. If, if you're a listener. Partially. Partially. Yeah, so I drive one or two of the cars, but yeah. Well, the video well, that they're going to see. He took the video yeah. of just you. Uh, yeah. okay. So was, it's 100% him. That's, that's <laughs> all me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just really the monkey in the seat. The guy that owns the entire operation <laughs> is what got it there and made everything happen. So we will give some credit cool. words due. Cool people. All yeah, of them absolutely. are, everybody was cool people. Yeah. They, yes. uh, Chris invited us out this past weekend, and uh, Nona had no idea what to do. So she won best dressed on the track, of course. God. <laughs> I didn't send you the picture. Rockingham, like, oh, what yes. Facebook page has a picture of you on it yeah. behind the car. So I think you're absolutely right. I yes. think she. Uh, oh my God, what? Yeah, I knew we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to send that to you later. Yeah, you're on It's the, probably uh, really bad. I'm no, probably like mid, like, no, 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 bite no, or something. No, yeah. Yeah. Oh I jokingly, I, well, I made the comment to you guys, but to some other people as well. Because I was wearing the Black Rifle, um, what they call their coffee of the U.S., like the CODIS or POTUS right. seal. Um, I was wearing the, the Black Rifle CODIS seal shirt, and then Nona's wearing an elegant dress, and she's got her makeup on. It was just my normal Lily Pulitzer dress. There was nothing, like, special about it. It was just my go-to. I just happened to be wearing black tonight because it's evening. That's and we, all. we're in an area where... Normally, these two would be the most attractive people there. And then <laughs> Nona shows up. I, I fit in. I Chris mean, is obviously much more attractive than I am. I mean, you're lucky you didn't run into somebody wearing the same dress. I mean, they're yeah. usually at a drag uh, race. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at any motorsports, you might run into, yes. like, very well-dressed. No, not at all. Like, you were definitely very well-dressed. It well -dressed, was my yeah. first experience at a racetrack ever. Yeah, there were a lot of people that got lost in that. They didn't know what to think anymore. They were like, what cars? <laughs> and right on, <laughs> right on the other side of the track, they were having a big uh, Super Chevy, you said? Super the whole Chevy thing side? was a Super Chevy Chevy. Okay. Yeah, yes. yeah. So. I, I did see... Somebody in a 94 to uh, 2000 Mustang, or I think that's the generation, 94 to 01, um, replaced the pony badge with a Chevy bow tie. Fair. And I was like... It probably had a Chevy motor. But they still had the Cobra badges on mm -hmm. the side. Well, so I was trying to figure out what was going on there. I mean, in fairness, I was driving the Ford Mustang jet car yeah. at the Super Chevy show. <laughs> but I did not take any out any crowds of people. So that's true. That was true. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Itself, so yeah, yeah. She doesn't know what we're talking about. No, no. You're right. I have no yeah. idea. Mustangs are well known for just taking out groups of people. Like it's, they'll leave a car show it. and try and drift, they'll and do then burn out. Yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, they're off into the trees. It's or a whole curb thing. Or, it's a whole thing. Yeah, it's part of the you know. Mustang it's curse. part of the experience. You might die. No, no there's no de death involved usually. No. Well, you said taking out. I mean, nobody's like fatally harmed in these cool. things. You've seen the videos of people at these weird, they call them street takeovers, or car events where people are entirely too close to the car that they're filming? Yes, yes. Yeah. So they're entirely too close to the car that they're like filming. Like somebody doing a burnout yeah. and then getting hit by yep. the car. To, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. gotcha. Mustangs or, are pros at that. They're especially designed for that. <laughs> Leaving okay. Mustang Week is the big one. Pulling out of Myrtle Beach on Mustang Week and just ripping through people. Okay. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like Death Central. I don't really know that either, but our daughter has a Mustang convertible. Mm -hmm. So now I know that because you said that. And she did not take out groups of people either. Yeah. Thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. But the Mustang's for sale. <laughs> so a quick plug. Your 16 year old yes. has a convertible Mustang. That was you her guys first are car. so yes. brave. Yeah. I'm sure she your insurance it. rates are through the roof. No, she picked it. And it's a V6. So oh, it wasn't like a crazy okay. high performance yeah. one. But, you know, and we thought too, you know, she has never really been into cars like our son is as much. Um, and we were, she was looking at getting her first car. We took her and showed her, you know, Accords and Civics and basic cars, Nissan Sentra. Right. The normal, normal cars. cars. Right, right, car. right. And she goes, no, 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 Dad. I want something. I want a Charger. I want a Challenger. <laughs> I want a Mustang. I want this. And she landed on a Mustang convertible. So she is your daughter after all. Apparently, yes. yeah. I mean, the attitude alone says <laughs> yes. 100% she's my daughter. <laughs> what was your first caller? Mine was a Fiat, a convertible Fiat. Cute. But it was a stick, and it took me forever to learn how to drive it, so I had to trade it in. And what area of the country did you grow up? Seattle, Washington. Okay, so up and down hills yes. with a stick shift. Yes. That sounds miserable. Scary. <laughs> what about you? Yeah. 66 Chevelle. 
Yeah, I assume also car. stick shift. No, it was an automatic. Really? Um, but very shortly thereafter, I had a car that was a stick. So okay, uh, okay. Yeah, but, yeah. What was your a, first a car? A uh, Buick Century Custom. Wow. Buick? Yeah. Oh, okay. my God. And you? <laughs> we... I didn't get a first car. We had a family. I had to walk everywhere. Well, you always have a first. Yeah, what was the first? actually. All right. The first car that I bought myself, I was 19 years old, and it was a Nissan Murano. Okay. And oh, okay. I was nice. very newly married, and it was like my first mom car. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my parents made me save money basically my, my entire childhood. I've told her this story, but my parents' philosophy for my brothers and I growing up was that any money we got, didn't matter if it was from working, babysitting, birthday money, chores. You babysat people? Like twice, <laughs> yeah. I that question is, is the <laughs> adults yeah. in your life who put you in a babysitting well, let's role. Let's go ahead and open up the hotline for that. <laughs> so we'd like to address that if now. You if you were suffering. traumatized yes. by <laughs> Andrew babysitting you as yeah. a child, please call in now. Realistically, <laughs> what, what had happened was... I mean, he'll still babysit yeah. for the viewers. <laughs> oh yeah. If anybody just... You know, exactly. leave a message exactly. in the comments he below. He babysits my kids. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's the exact same thing. Oh, my you put, God. You, so you put Chloe in charge. You put me in front of a computer or video games <laughs> or a TV, and I'm the oldest one there, so I'm inherently <laughs> oh responsible. God. I don't have to do anything because, <laughs> as every parent does, you already set out all the food, and you made sure that the routine is known. <sighs> Everybody has a task or whatever and check in on us and call us. There was... What was I going to do? Set them on fire? I mean, that's an option. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you thought about it, Andrew. No. You're supposed to deal with all the complaints and whining. Yeah, you write it down and then throw it away before your parents go. home. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're supposed to mentor them and yes. coach them, yeah. help them set goals. Yeah. Be, be a good example for them exactly. in their future. Yeah, exactly. You know. Exactly. Right, yeah. <laughs> now I'm questioning my decisions in life. So Brianna, our daughter, whose first car was a Mustang right. convertible, she just recently, because that one you know, was older, had a lot of miles on it. She's okay. gone out on her own at 16 years old and bought herself a Jeep Cherokee. <gasps> yes. Nice. And it's nice. nice. Oh, a nice, nice one. She's making the payments on it. She's mm -hmm. holding down two, three jobs mm -hmm. and making it happen. She's going to high school and college, and she's off and away doing her thing. So That's very, awesome. Very proud of her. Yes. So, That's yeah. awesome. Cooper, are you listening? <laughs> no, or he's any not other listening. teenagers out there? <laughs> yes. yeah. Any of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get your act together. <laughs> yeah, my, my parents made me, I mean, I bought, it wasn't like it was expensive. It was a $2,000 car. We had we had family friends that owned dealerships. It's actually how I met Steve Celine. Okay. Um, one of our family friends owns Campbell Ford, Niles, Michigan. And they're a Celine dealership, an authorized repair, whatever shop, whatever you call it. I don't, I don't know all the lingo. Um, but another friend of ours owned a uh, used car dealership, but they dealt with, it's kind of like Matthew Matthew's Motors here, where it's usually only like a year or two old, mm -hmm. still like a decent car, not like that other place that's all over, what, I don't know what the name, I'm not even going to say it because they're bad cars and you're probably going to break down or catch on fire. Anyways. Unless he, they want to sponsor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And we'll say the name. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he took me to the uh, Chicago auto auction. And I had my bank account. I knew how much money I had. Mm -hmm. And he was like, find a car within your budget and we'll drive it back. And I was like, all right. Mm -hmm. And that was the only thing that I saw that was it. That's not what I wanted. Right. But it was the only thing that I could get today. And because yeah. I didn't want to leave without a car, because I knew mm -hmm. who knows who knows when I was going to go back. So right there, paid two grand and drove it back. Completely illegally, no plates or anything. Mm -hmm. We ran the. It was when they still had uh, the uh, gates at the toll booths. You didn't. You could drive through them with the transponder, and the gate would lift. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know this. He's like, "Hey, just follow me really close, and when the gate lifts, stay right on me." Get back to Indiana, and he's like, "Yeah, just so you know, if you get a ticket in the mail, throw it away because it's not valid." And I'm like, mm -hmm. "What? Just." <laughs> Interesting. Fortunately, I didn't have a license plate on the car either, so it's completely impossible to identify the car. Right. But here I am, 16 years old, and the first thing that I did in my first car that I bought is commit 
I don't know. I thought the first rule of crime is you don't admit to admitting or <laughs> creating a crime or whatever. So can don't, we just pause and take yeah. a call from the state of Indiana? Uh, <laughs> they want to have a conversation with you with fees and everything else. It's, 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 go, so now no you've way. accrued multiple no. years of yeah, fees so. and you owe hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah, exactly, to the state yeah. of Indiana. <laughs> so, no, actually, it's the Tri-State Tollway, which I believe is owned by China now. So fuck Oh, China. okay. Oh, fuck China. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so with Brianna, well, both of our daughters, uh, we also have a 27-year-old daughter. With both of them, the deal was whatever amount of money they could earn by the time it was to, to buy their first car, we would match that. Mm -hmm. So if they only saved up 100 bucks, we would match them with 100 bucks. That was their budget to go buy a new car. Um, and, you know, $10,000, we are going to match them $10,000. Right. So, you know, they're kids. So they're yes. going to do the best they can. So uh, our oldest did pretty well. She bought her first car. And, and you know, the whole point of a first car is you don't want something super nice. You right. They're going to go mm -hmm. out and tear it out. Maybe. Both of our kids have done really great so far. The oldest. Uh, Jaden is probably going to be a ball of fire racing around the city and <laughs> causing terror not. on the streets. We hope not. But <laughs> but, uh, but Brianna, she was able to save enough money, and that's about all she could afford at the time was that Mustang convertible. But she was really mm -hmm. happy with it. But. Mm -hmm. It had some issues. I mean, not that many issues. It is for sale. So, <laughs> we, I, <laughs> I had a buddy of mine uh, years years ago that I helped with some like side projects and stuff when I was in college, and uh, and my buddy, I should say, I started working for this guy and just ended up kind of becoming part of his family. Um, his daughter, uh, who went through West Point and everything like that. He told me the story about when he got her her first car, and he had the exact opposite philosophy. They went and bought brand new car with all the warranty and everything like that because he's like, I know she's going to wreck it, and at least I know she's safe. Mm -hmm. And that was his philosophy. So I look at him like, mm. man, I could never do that. I would never, ever, ever. I know what mm. I did to cars. Sure, yeah. I could never, ever, ever. The, yeah. the the plan has been for the last several years that Cooper, when he gets his license, hold on, time out. That is your plan, right. and you created that plan after I met you, and within the last year and a half. Ironically, what you just said is what I've been putting into place since before I met you, and have been putting money away in each of their bank so accounts for exactly for that. Truck? So he's gonna pay me for my truck? No, he's not gonna fucking pay you for your <laughs> truck. Come on. I mean, that money's going to the state of Indiana. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so I've been putting away money so that way, when the time yeah. comes, they can do 50 50 with me. I mean, there's no right answer, right? That's the yeah. first rule of parenting. We don't talk about yeah. parenting. Oh, wait, that's yeah. a different rule. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no, I don't know if there's getting it right, right? We're all going to screw them up in different ways. Mm -hmm. You just got to figure out how bad or how good it's going to be. Well, so. at least in a mid sized truck like that, it's, I mean, obviously, if they get hit by a semi, it's not going to do much for them. It, but most cars aren't. But it's not, uh, you know, a Honda Civic where they're going to get run over by some of these squatted truck mor morons, you know, like, yeah. I mean, I put a 66 Chevelle into a tree doing 80 when I was 18 years old, right before prom. Oh, wow. I'm still here to talk about it. I mean, I'm doing okay, apart from a couple little things. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, that happens. <laughs> my uh, my parents, I told her this. My, so I was born on Christmas Eve. My parents, when they left the hospital, they had a Volvo. I don't know what year it was at the time, like how new it was. But they left the hospital, got into a wreck with me in the car seat and then went right back to the hospital to have me checked out. And she thinks that's why I am how I am today. A hundred percent. Probably. But it was a Volvo. Yeah. So, you know. He still was probably not in a very safe car seat. So just because he was in a Volvo, it was in 1987. Car seats were mm. shit then. They were just little plastic containers Anything's you would throw your baby in. Anything's better than what we talked about earlier with the mom the holding, mom holding the, baby. the baby. I mean, on that's the, what I was going to yeah. say in the 70s. I mean, they threw you in the back seat, didn't even have a seatbelt, and they yeah. handed mm. you a pack of smokes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. That's true. So we, we glossed over basically who you are other than race car driver. That's so, all I am. It's I'm, right here. It says live to race right on the arm. That's it. That's all you need to know. Nothing else. I don't want to talk about the Air Force? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, all right. So uh, you retired from the Air Force, right? I did. I retired nine years ago, 2015. Were you there through it all? No, not all of it. Just part of it? Yes. The majority. The majority of it. Mm -hmm. How did you guys meet? I know that's her question, so. No, it's okay. You can ask it. We met online. 
when Yahoo was a dating. Yeah, Yahoo dating. We were the first. You guys yes. should have just been here for the last episode yeah. that we recorded because we were just talking about AOL's Messenger and Yahoo Messenger. Yeah. 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 I mean, we took Polaroid pictures. Okay, no, it wasn't Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> but it was pretty brand new back then. Yes. Yeah. We were the pioneers of online mm-hmm. dating. Wow. Yeah, not quite the newspaper ad era, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, early in the internet days. Single white female looking for... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. I wonder if anybody would have success running a newspaper ad these days. Mm. Uh, yeah, if you're a prostitute. Okay. <laughs> but who reads newspapers? Actually, I was flying back from Edinburgh. I met a guy who was reading a newspaper. I, really? I think he may have been the last one. <laughs> yeah. I think they were holding out. The newspaper publisher was like, we got one guy left. <laughs> We're hanging in there. I know he's dead. That's it. We're done. We're shutting the business down. The I, Star News doesn't even deliver anymore. It is mailed now. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Wow. And everybody is so mad about it who pays for the subscription because they don't get their daily news until like 4 p.m. <laughs> Unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So what year did you guys so meet? Things. 2000 and... No, three. Yeah, four. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's been 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. So we met online and we met down in Tacoma, the waterfront area. Okay. And it was a six hour date. Yeah, so you got to tell the whole story. Yeah, I'll let you tell the story. I got to tell the whole story. It's slightly different than mine. But you got to know Sarah, right? (laughs) Um, She's awesome, but not always (laughs) on the ball with details and. Logistical things and details of meetings <laughs> and appointments and things, right? Okay. Such as today. But, well, that's another story, right? Yes. So we had, re- had reached out to her, I mean, because she's hot, <laughs> and she had a cute dog. So I messaged her, and I said, hey, what's up? Right? Because that, that works. Yeah, yeah. Right? And she responded at some point. So we had a yes. conversation. Friday comes around. I'm out in the garage. I was building my first funny car, my first drag car. Well, not my first drag car, but my first... I'll call funny cars out in the garage working on it. And she calls me up and she's like, Hey, are we still meeting at the waterfront this afternoon? Safe place to meet people. Lots of cops. I have no idea that we have a date. None. (laughs) Right. Like I, and I'm good at this stuff. Like it's what I do for a living. Right. I can fly thousands of miles away, meet a tanker in the middle of the Mediterranean, hit up for gas on time every time. Like I know, I know what's going on. Right. But I'm like, wait, wait, who's this? I remember the profile, like, I'll be there, <laughs> right? So I run in the house, jump in the shower, throw on some clothes, jump in my truck, and I had a big dually crew cab at the time for racing and that stuff. I'm stuck in traffic. I call her like two, three times on the way because I'm like, uh, I saw the profile. I'm like, I'm not going to mess this one up. So I'm, like, I'm on my way. I'm there. I'm just running in traffic. This is what. So I pull up, have to do like a six-point turn to get into a parking spot because, you know, big truck in Tacoma. Right. She jumps out of her uh, Nissan Pathfinder that she had at the time, and I'm like, Best decision in life. To this day, 20 years later, I swear there's some poor dude out there that she was supposed to meet up with. And she got him confused with me. <laughs> so to my benefit, you know, 20 years later, here we are. But, yeah, I think I was the mistake phone call. So what's your story on this? If you're, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be with him. Pretty yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I do mess things up from time to time. Like today, but <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened today? That he, was the second time that it, the the airport picking up the neighbor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He texted me and he was like, "Hey, so she forgot about picking up the neighbor." Oh, but there's more oh, to that story. No. Oh. Yeah, that's that so would have been, that been for, great if that was just mm-hmm. it. So she sat there for a while. Okay, I was waiting and I was texting. I'm here and I'm telling her and everything and. And I was looking over, and I was like, okay, well, this, I'm looking at her message, and this, this, everything's right. She should be here. But I feel in my bones that something's wrong. Okay. And then I was like, I sent it to him. I was like, maybe he'll see something I don't. And as I sent it to him, I go, oh, gosh. It's like the wrong month. It's October 30th. The wrong 30th. month? It's, the wrong it's month. not even the wrong day. You no. got to buy a move month. Oh, my God. I wasn't going to share that, but thank you. <laughs> she was there a month early. <laughs> yes. I would have been waiting a good long That's time. That's hilarious, though. Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. Yes. That's so, really so, funny. Wow. I mean, it so, doesn't so, happen so, that often, so I'm still going with you were supposed to meet me. No, there. the point of the story because is. Because I'm always right. Right, but I just, I'm, I'm going to apologize to this poor guy that's out there. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I mean, you know, it worked out well for me. Yes. <laughs> See, I forget things. 
And then she's like, it's on the calendar. And then I pull up the calendar and show sure it's on the calendar. We have a family calendar for so, a reason. I put everything on the family calendar for a reason. So Baker Levitt from Black Rifle and, um, oh my gosh, they, they he works, he's like a board member for, you would know this company. They make sports drinks, or not sports drinks, but like recovery drinks. It's not the IV one, it's the other one. I, had, I can't remember. You would you would know what it was if I pulled up. Anyways, he reached out to me last week and was like, "Hey, you're on this podcast." I'm like, "Yeah, dude, I've followed you for and been we've been friends on Facebook for a long time." And he's like, "Hey, uh, would you guys you know like any guests?" And I was like, "Yeah." So he sends me a bunch of you know guests, makes some introductions to some guys, some producers, and stuff like that. And he the the producer puts me in in touch with this guy named Matt Kenny that we're supposed to have interview with on Friday. And I was like, yeah, that's a perfect time. There's nothing on the calendar. I'm talking to the guy on the phone. I'm like, I'm like, hold on, let me look at my calendar because if I don't, my wife will be really mad at me. Mm-hmm. So I look at the calendar and there's nothing there. I tell her, Hey, we're interviewing this guy at 1 PM on Friday. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, What? I was like, there's nothing on the calendar. She's like, we have to pick up Cooper from school at 1 30. And I was like, no, at 1 p.m. Yeah. Every Friday, he lets yeah. out at 1 p.m. Yeah. So it shouldn't need to be on the calendar because it's a reoccurring event. Okay, lesson learned. Apparently, I need to add pickup times on there. When Jesus I, fucking when, Christ. When I look at the calendar, I'm like, and I see nothing there. It's that's, all clear. Yeah, yeah. You're all good. Yeah. yeah. You've met the requirements. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I thought, I, I knew I was doing, and we're talking on the phone, he's like, man, I don't know how different we are, but it sounds like we're the exact same person. And then hang up the phone. I'm super confident. And I tell her, she's like, you have to pick up Cooper then. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, no, I said, you can interview him, but I won't be here because I'll be picking Cooper up. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. So now we're interviewing him next Monday. So. Nice. So <sighs> he, has a, he has a bad Friday anyways. It was, uh, it was meant to fall through. There you go. It all happens for a reason. Yeah. Right? Perfect. So... And yeah, we, I mean, we have people fall through all the time. We were supposed to have Baker on on Friday, and he had to drive to Savannah uh, because his mom's house got hit really bad by the hurricane. Oh, wow! So it's really weird how it like carved all around us. It is. It, I don't know. Luckily. Were yeah. you guys here on Thursday and Friday? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, we were here. Yep. Did you guys get rain? I, yeah. Yes. It, it ran pretty Sideways. Heavy. For, yeah, normal. Like rain. Normal for, people, for people that don't know this area at all, it's really weird because we're kind of isolated by the mountains. Sometimes you get a storm that'll come over the mountains, but a lot of times you don't. So you'll watch clouds forming, and they just never come here. They just stay there and then go away. But then you get storms that come off the ocean, and they're just really quick. But when we lived in Leland, it definitely rained more than living over here. Oh, a thousand percent. And all that really? separates really? it. Yeah. The, the the river stops it. Yeah. It's, oh, it's interesting. It it hmm. we watch the clouds form around us all the time. It'll get dark here and then they're just gone. Hmm. And you're like, Oh, I know it's gonna rain. You look at the at the you know, radar map or whatever, and it's like zero percent chance. You're like, what are you talking about? Yes. It's oh. right on top of me. <laughs> yeah. And it just never rains. Oh, it's a trip. Yeah. Huh. So, but yeah, in Leland, it rained at least twice as much other than that little pop-up tropical storm last week hmm. or two weeks ago now already. It was two weeks, weeks ago. Yeah, a couple weeks, weeks ago, yeah. yeah. So, I think that's weird here is that it'll rain really hard and then go away, but sometimes it'll rain and I'll be like, looking in the backyard, it's not raining. And look in the front yard, it's like, oh, it's pouring down. Yeah. That's so strange. It's so crazy. We it's had strange. just the other day, I was looking out this window over here in the kitchen and I saw the sheets of rain coming down mm-hmm. and I walked over here and looked out the door and the same thing. There's nothing. Yes. <laughs> yep. But yeah. So back to talking about you guys, because we're here to talk about you guys and not rain. <laughs> um, what? Like <laughs> she, she says that she would do my activities, but I don't really like to do hers. So she's like, I don't want to do yours because you don't do mine. So how did you guys, how did you accept him as a race car driver? Did it take some back and forth or were you just always on board with it and he gave you what you needed to be happy? She's staring right at me because she's like, this is a good question. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, it kind of goes back to another question. And it was when I first started dating him, and he, he's been in the Air Force and gone all the time. And me complaining to it with my friend who said, either you accept him the way he is, gone all the time, or don't. But don't complain, whatever one you pick. And so I was like, okay, thank you. And I didn't complain about the Air Force, and I kind of just used the same thing for the racing. This is what he loves to do, so I'm just in, and I'm not complaining about it. And I don't. And I actually enjoy it, too. She said I was smiling a lot on Saturday. She was like, you were in your element. And I was like, these guys, like, I can talk a little bit about cars, but I don't, I can't tinker like that. I'll go mm -hmm. and look up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a diagram online or whatever to fix something. I actually have one thing published ever in my life by uh, American Muscle. Mm -hmm. I bought their uh, hood pins for my 04 Mustang GT, and they didn't have any sort of documentation for installation because they were meant to installed however you wanted to mm. you could remove the bump stops or you could weld or you could you know Wherever, find, yeah, yeah. yeah so i was in college at the time and i specifically was in a technical writing class my english 201 or whatever and so i was like i'm gonna do this as my project so mm. i and my car had just got repainted somebody had hit my car mm -hmm. and i had it was silver and i had it repainted the bullet green a high metallic flake okay. And uh, so right out of the paint shop, so super nervous. I'm spending hours and hours and hours online trying to figure out the tools that I need, you know, going and buying step bits. I didn't even know what those were at the time and trying to figure out how to mark the hood so I know where to drill in the right place. And I wrote the manual of all time and they gave me $100. All right. <laughs> you, got, you got paid to write. That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. What did you, you do with that hundred dollars? Bought more car parts. <laughs> oh, I thought nice. you were gonna say buy alcohol. No, mm -hmm. I wasn't like drinking at all at that time. All I was doing was going to school, going to the gym, working in the emergency department. I didn't have time for it. And so, I don't know if you're familiar. Or, uh, you probably are with all the racing and racetracks in Indiana, Michigan, and stuff in general. Um, I was in the. Uh, um, which I know you're going to be like, this is kind of lame. Uh, autocross, I raced autocross. No, that's right. Yeah. So we had we had access to uh, Tyrex Test Track, Gingerman Raceway in okay. South Haven, sure. so their mm -hmm. uh, road course track, mm -hmm. a couple other places. And that was like awesome. Oh, sure. The problem was my race car was my daily driver. Yeah. So I'm always breaking stuff. Sure. Um, Sherrod... Radir, Raldiris, I can't remember how to pronounce the name, where he's an executive for UPR performance in Florida. Um, I had reached out to them and was like asking for a sponsorship and they're like, no, we don't do that for people like you. He didn't say that. Look, people to be, like you. To be clear, to be clear, he didn't say it like that. It was I love like, it. It was like, you're kind of like a nobody. I'm friends with him on Facebook to those days. Mm -hmm. Cool guy. Um, but I had bought, you know, suspension parts from them. One, a YouTube video that still lives on to this day on my YouTube channel, because I was on YouTube in the days of you just upload whatever. You wanted to share a video with your friends, you upload it on YouTube. So there's a video where I pulled out the uh, shocks on my Mustang and come to find out I was lucky that I did. One, uh, I think it was the passenger side shock was completely shot, the whole gas tube was blown. So I pulled it out and it's the worst, it's the worst video ever. If you guys go and watch it, if, if all of one of you goes and watches it, <laughs> I pull it out and I push the gas tube down and it just doesn't return. Yep. And I was like, wow, I got really lucky doing this. And then, of course, I install all these amazing parts and I drive my car. And I'm like, this is what this car is supposed to feel like. <laughs> And she talking about talking the other day. Oh, you're uh, you're just realizing that uh, your car is falling apart because it's the longest you've ever. I've had this truck for almost five years. Okay, and, and he's like, never owned a vehicle that long oh, ever. Wow. I the, think like two to three years is the yeah. longest you've ever owned. I think a vehicle. two years is the max for any, and six to twelve That's months crazy for all the others. Crazy to okay. me. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah, I don't it is cars really on. crazy. Well, yeah. I, I bought my Mustang when I was in Georgia, and then I moved back to Indiana when I got out of the army. And there's snow in Indiana. Mustang plus snow doesn't work very well, mm -hmm. as you know, crowd would mm -hmm. would have it. So sure. yeah, um, yeah. Question that I asked you, I think yeah, I asked you at the track. 
which was the more aggressive or hard or powerful takeoff, a plane that you had flown in or ridden in in the Air Force or the jet car? I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to let you answer it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's I come from a, a spoiled perspective, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I raced cars my entire life, pretty much. I've been around it my entire life. I started racing very young, very fast cars, all the way up to nitro funny cars and fuel alters, which are incredibly fast, right? And then I flew jets in the Air Force. And I also, after I retired from the Air Force, um, and when I flew jets, I flew big heavies, right? Yeah. Big cargo airplanes. Um, and then when I retired, I went to fly for the airlines. So most of those, they don't accelerate super fast. So the jet car, it doesn't make the power really early. It starts to come on later on track. So that's where you really start to feel the acceleration and the power of it. And that's where it picks up its speed. So I always kind of have this flawed perspective where I'm spoiled. I've gone really fast in race cars. But I've also done stuff in jets. Yeah, This is like the culmination of those two things into one. Um, so ultimately, this is faster. The jet funny car is faster. But it's probably one of the slower race cars I've ever driven in the first 60 feet or so. Oh, wow. So it tends to be a little bit slower. In oh, and I made the comment because you said something after you watched the video. And I didn't. It wasn't something that I thought to say. Mm-hmm. But I realized it when I watched the video before I showed it to you that what I watched with my eyes felt way faster than what my phone recorded. Sure. And you even met, you're like, man, it looks really slow offline. I was like, slow. <laughs> that's, that's so weird to yeah. say because you went 239 miles an hour down the racetrack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and I flew C-17s, right? And so one of the coolest things you do with C-17 is the tactical departures and arrivals. And that was where the real fun gets. It's the yeah. end of the runway when you've got all that smash going Airplanes cleaned up, the gears up, all of the, you're all cleaned up, and then you pull up into a really hard climb to avoid getting shot at off the departure on the runway. And it's an impressive, impressive feat for a big as an airplane of an F, F, C-17, right? An F-16 or F-15 or any fighter jets, they do it all the time. But for a big, huge airplane, it's like defying gravity. And it's, it is really cool to see. And they have them at air shows. You've probably seen them before. So, well, I've ridden in one. So... Have you, were you ever involved with any of the uh, ones that they fitted the rocket pods onto? No. I've seen videos yeah, of that and I think yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, they put them on the C-130. I think at some point they put them on the C-17s too. But the capability of the C-17 was so great anyway. It could take off, you know, improvised runways, really short, stuff like that. I watch a ton of weird military history stuff. And there's a guy called the Fat Electrician. If okay. you've ever heard of him, mm-hmm. he's another army veteran. He's a huge history buff. Um, he talks about all these weird stories, military experiments and things like that. And that's one of I, I had seen it on other channels, but when he tells a story, the way that he editorializes it makes it even more fun and entertaining to watch. He's one of those channels that you can show kids in the classroom and they would actually pay attention because it's when he tells the story, it's funny, but it's still historical. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tons tons of stuff like that. And I see stuff like that. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. I've seen videos of, I think it was an F4, something with uh, w- one of the ones that like the wing was sheared off or something. And they were still able to like fly it because the engine was so powerful. They were still able to keep it straight and land it and return yeah. safely. Stuff like that. How, as a pilot, like has anything like that ever gone through your head? Like, what if this happens? What are... What are my P's and Q's? What am I going to do? So as a pilot, you're trained not necessarily for your day-to-day stuff. So right. I'm not really trained to fly the airplane from point. I mean, I am, right? You, the basic principles of flight apply. and But what you were really paid the money to do is to respond to emergencies. So right. how do we handle it? How do we stay calm and collected in those situations, respond to it appropriately so there are what are called bold face things that you need to rapidly respond to by memory. And we practice those in simulators. And so that's why pilots are paid the money we're paid is because we can respond to those and we practice them a lot. So how often does it happen? Very rarely. I mean, I have never had anything major happen, at least nothing that was major to me. Um, been shot at in Iraq and Afghanistan a few times, but nothing to the point where it was like, Oh my gosh, this, this could be it. I mean, we did it. We've had some pretty hairy situations, mostly weather related or changing runways and doing things like that. But I mean, that's just part of the job. It's just like in a race car. I've had kind of crazy things happen in race cars before too. Um, and you just respond to it. I mean, you get, when you're in that and you live in that life, you just, it, you become really comfortable in it to some degree. 
So, tell us a story, anything that you can think of, where you're like, he needs to get out. He needs to be done with this. Both, it could be Air Force or racing or both. Oh, I've never felt that way. Really? Yeah, never. <laughs> it's been scary a few times, like him flying and, you know, oh, yeah, we just flying along. And then all of a sudden you can see light coming from the bottom of the plane. <laughs> <clears throat> That's unnerving. You know, he's told me a few stories that are pretty scary. I've seen him almost hit the wall at the racetrack. But, you know, this is what he loves to do. I'm not going to tell him, nope, you can't do that. I, I don't mean, like, parenting him, but moment when we were like... We have to stop. Yeah. No. No, she's never mm-hmm. done that. Never she has always that. 100% supported me. Never told me no. The opposite, actually. Like, when he's ready to quit, I'm like, okay, what other yeah. racing are you going to do now? If you're not going to drag race, you need to do something else. Because I know him. He has to be doing something to just keep him going. How much money do you think you have to spend on racing average per year? I mean, when I was at the height of my drag racing career, which was my goal since I was a young kid, um, I needed three to five million a year wow. to make it work. Um, keep in mind, I did the more the majority of my <laughs> racing oh my on my own dime, and I did not. I did not come from money. Nobody handed me money, and I raced at at the highest level of NHRA drag racing that you can get, really, mm-hmm. through just really working hard and just staying focused on my goal. I had a lot of support from Sarah. We made a lot of sacrifices as a family. Um, my dad supported me. He was there. We worked together a lot through the years. He was like my best friend. We had other people that came in and helped us. Um, my grandfather through marriage, you know, that makes me fourth generation help, but it really was just believing in a dream and taking whatever it took to get there. And then a lot of good fortune and paying attention to synchronicities of the life and just when doors open and when doors close. Mm -hmm. And man, it has been a struggle. It has been a journey. There has been such severe lows and such severe highs. I've gone from uh, setting a world record in Florida after driving 1,800 miles across the country by myself with a truck and trailer and setting a record to getting back and servicing the car and find out we ruined a motor hmm. to putting our backup motor into in the car for the second run for the finals and blowing that motor up with a whole series of racing ahead of us and no motors to go run the car. Uh. Um, so it's it's been an up and down throughout. Uh, at one point, I came home in complete just destitute. And Sarah and I was upset And I was done drag racing. I was going to quit. I was walking away from the sport, completely hated it and everybody in it. And I told Sarah, I'm like, I'm going to go out and buy a Corvette and go road racing. She said, okay, let's do it. It's the next chapter of your life. Let's go do it. And I did it and I loved it. And I won the championship that year and had a blast doing it Mm -hmm. and realized it was too easy because I won the championship. (laughs) I I went back to drag racing where I get my butt kicked routinely and need three to five million a year to compete. (laughs) Do I, um... (laughs) Years, years, and years ago, more than 10 plus years ago, um, I bought for my dad, and my brothers came along as well. I bought, it was a Autobahn Club, something in Chicago track out there. Uh, it was like a supercar racing experience where mm-hmm. you could just yeah. select anything you wanted. You know, I think my dad drove a uh, Mercedes Benz, what is their supercar? GLS or something like that. Yeah, something. Yeah. I, I don't remember. He drove that. I drove. I, it was not not the uh, not the C8 Corvette, but it was when the C7s first came out. Mm-hmm. It was the first generation of it. So I drove that. I don't remember what my brother drove or brothers drove. I think one of them also drove a C7. I don't remember what the other one drove. But that was awesome. But I was sitting there the entire time thinking, I can never, at that time, especially because I was in college and right out of the army, didn't have my disability or anything like that yet. I was like. I am never going to be able to afford to do something like this again because I'm not going to be able to afford the car. You have to know people to come on the track unless you're part of the club or whatever. It's like Gingerman Raceway in South Haven is like Porsche of America headquarters or one of them. And they're like really culty about it. Oh, they're bad. Yeah. They don't like Corvette guys either. Yeah. We we don't want any other car on here (laughs) because your tires are different. Right. Right. Dude, it's rubber. Yeah. I, I understand that the quality is not as good as yours, but it's still a mm-hmm. car and it still has tires. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
But but no, I get it. You know, I um, I, I experienced the same thing. You know, I, went, I started out, I got married very, very young to my first wife. Had a kid right away. I don't know, I was 21 years old. And I wanted to race. My You know, it was my goal since, like I said, since I was a little kid. She wanted nothing to do with it. She even told me at one point, if I go drag racing, she's going to divorce me, right? So we ended up in England. Things were really, really bad. We separated. She went back to the States. We ended up divorced. And therefore, in my career field, I was enlisted. I worked on airplanes at that point. So I was enlisted for seven years before I became an officer. And they offered a reenlistment bonus. I took that reenlistment bonus. I went right out and bought a dragster. (laughs) <laughs> but there's always a reason, there's always an excuse if you don't want to do it. But if it's your passion and it's what mm-hmm. you want most in life, you find a way. And that's what I did. I found a way. And I just kept digging and I hustled and I worked hard and I made it happen. It, it was something, I, I mean, it was who I am. It's why it's on my arm. Um, I To this day, you know, when David called me up early this year, mm-hmm. after a long break from drag racing, we're talking six, seven years of not drag racing, and I was road racing. And called me up and said, hey, you want to drive my Jet Funny car? It, it literally was like a breath of fresh air. It was something I needed. And I looked at Sarah and I said, hey, look at the schedule. 24 races all over the country. <laughs> Every weekend. And you get paid to do it. I mean, it's not like I'm making well, money. I meant. Yeah. yeah. And David. Well, most people you have to pay to race. You might right. win and earn yes. money, but you're going there just sure. to be paid to do it. And at this point, to be a paid driver is kind of cool, right? I'm getting yeah. to be an old man these days. You know, my time has come. My my skill set isn't as sharp as it used to be. That, that's how it goes. I think for your, through our generation, I think that that you could probably extend in it easily into your 50s, at least potentially your 60s, depending on your skill level and reaction time and stuff. Mm-hmm. My dad was a huge Mark Martin fan. I was a Jeff Gordon fan growing up. Okay. Um, but I just remember like feeling like Mark Martin needed to retire. Like I just hated him. I didn't really hate yeah. him, but it was like, why is this guy so good? Yeah. He just needs to go away. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, to that point, do you ever feel like you have imposter syndrome be- for any reason? You know, you cobbled together parts that shouldn't have worked and they did or. Oh, I mean, that's, that's any form of racing ever. Right. Like, to, I mean, you saw David do it over the weekend. Oh, my God, that dude. I mean, that car was on fire <laughs> for the first run. The back of the car is on fire. It's a roasted marshmallow on the back of the car. And he hustled, man. You saw his arms. I mean, he's yeah. coded. I mean, he worked on that well, thing all day long. For the for the viewer, for anybody in the audience, I will link to pictures for the, the Facebook page for this. Because you look at the back of the car and you see this. And they... Somebody presented them with a plaque. Somebody printed. Yeah. Did you he, guys see he that? Gave him the picture with the plaque on. Yeah, it? yeah, it's him getting out of the car and looking at the back, and it's on fire. while it's on fire. Yes. Yes. And they printed it as a plaque and gave it to him while we were there. And I was like, first of all, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> I <know. laughs> but, but I mean, it's a really cool picture. Mm-hmm. It's kind of. Yes. It's still like racing in general. Kind of has like tacky advertising. I would mm-hmm. say. Because they'll yeah. just they'll just throw logos with like white backgrounds yeah. and like so I mean but it's like it's a really really cool picture and uh, their their daughter was over there showing their mom and she was asking if she needed to pay for it or whatever and I saw it and I was like wait that was earlier yeah that's cool and that's already you guys already have a picture of that and yeah yeah if you guys see this it's nuts and he they these guys all ripped the car apart they had the body off when when Nona and I got there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they'd ripped the car apart who were working on it, diagnosed the issue, pulled a bunch. I don't know anything about rocket engines, jet engines, anything like that. Mm-hmm. So they pulled out parts and they pulled out the smallest fucking grain of sand you will ever see. And that's what had caused the fire. That yeah, stuck the burner on. So what the burners on is, you know, so I'm in the other lane yeah. and I'm doing my normal show thing where we do flames and we do pops and do all that thing. And I'm, I'm trying to wait for David. I know he's having some issues. I can hear some of the things that are going on with his engine. I hear it shut down. I hear him restart. And I look over, and it's just constant flame out the back. And I'm like, oh, he's got some problems. And I go to shut him off, and then I'm told to go make a single, right? So I go up to make my single run. And meanwhile, you know, they're pushing him back. They took forever to activate the tree. I make my run all the way down. And Rob and his wife, right, they're very passionate about this. She's on the radio. What's going on? What's going on? Because from the end of the track where they're waiting for both of us yes. to come down, all they see is black smoke. Mm. And so that's scary, right? right? For a wife and a daughter to be at the end of the track, they see me and my car come down and the black car's not with me and there's smoke. So she wants to know what's going on. So fortunately, it all worked out. Everybody, you know, David was fine. But I'll tell you, that man is the most passionate 
we grew up together as kids. So we're about the same age. I think he's a year older than me, but we grew up around racetracks in Southern California. His dad raced jet funny car, jet cars and wheel standers. Uh, my dad raced nitro cars and dragsters and funny cars and things like that. And so we've kind of known each other our whole lives. And he's been doing this jet car stuff for 30 years and he loves it. He's super passionate about the sport. He knows all the history, he knows everybody in it. And he really loves putting on a show for the fans. So to be able to drive for him and to support him in doing this and Robin and his family, it's really been a great year. We have, and to watch him hustle the way he did, I'll tell you, I, all the years I've raced, if that would have happened to me, I think I would have loaded it in the trailer and I would have gone home and just cried myself into a puddle of tears. Yeah, really? I mean, yeah. That man, he showed such determination and adversity mm -hmm. and perseverance in that day to get that car back mm -hmm. together, to get back on track and put on a side by side. And there weren't there weren't, weren't a lot of people there, right? Because the hurricane had just come through. Right, right. Anybody who was coming from west of Charlotte was probably not coming to that event. Yeah. Right. But he was determined to put on a show for those folks. Even if there's 10 people in the stands, he's like, hey, I'm here and I'm going to get this car put back together and we're going to get on that track and put on a show. It's pretty amazing. The the thing that I thought, I mean, to your point, that was wild was you guys talked about, oh, the car was on fire, it's down, he's not racing. So in my mind, the car was on fire, it's down, he's not racing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was out there tinkering. And I mean, I've known guys like that my whole life, you know, like they're they're not going to waste any time because they want to be able to get to the next event. He might as well mm -hmm. work on it because he can't race mm -hmm. it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so he's out there tweaking, doing stuff, you know, going over to your car, looking at stuff, shooting the shit with us, you know, having fun, shaking hands mm -hmm. and everything like that. So I'm fully convinced that we're just there to watch one car pass. Right. I had no expectations of what was happening anyways. Like, I, I don't know what we were supposed sure, to expect. Yeah. I didn't know if we were going there to hang out. I didn't know if we were going to watch... 10 passes back to back or if it was one and done like no idea we were just there to hang out have fun you know whatever and then he's out there working on it, working on it, working on it they find the part it's working on it and then i hear you guys talking about oh yeah he's going to go out at the five it was supposed to be five it was supposed to be yeah. five and we yeah. pushed to six yeah yeah and i was like wait really like this is if it was a regular car I think I would have been more like, okay, yeah, because it's, it's a common mm -hmm. part. You could just go to, you know, Napa and grab yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But you just rebuilt a fucking jet engine <laughs> in the parking lot of a drag strip. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the cool thing about racers in general, right? So mm -hmm. the track was making announcements. People are running everywhere trying to find this one clevis we need. Yeah. That's so nice. And a good friend of his who works who is pretty high up at O'Reilly there in Rockingham called on some folks that even came out to the track. They weren't even planning to come out to the track that day. Mm -hmm. Him and his wife came out, brought the part we needed to make this thing work for him. Oh, so, wow. I mean, it pulled out the stops. Everybody so, was there to help. So when we, were, when we were out in the staging lanes, the there was a guy that pulled up in a golf cart or side-by-side, -side, I can't remember yep. what it was, and he asked me for a part, and I was like, oh, man, like I'm just here to watch it's these guys. Yeah, And then... David went and grabbed somebody else and like pulled something off a keychain and handed it to him. And he's like, yeah, there you go. And I was like, dude, these guys are like yeah. actually friendly with each other. It's mm -hmm. cool. I've seen it's, guys take parts off of their own cars and give it to a guy so they yeah. can make the next round. Yeah. Was, I love it. That, that's been the family of racing, right? My entire life. And that's why, you know, you can say what you will about evolution of people in society and social media and those kinds of things. But you break it down. Racers are real genuine people. And they're really there to help each other. Yeah. For from my perspective, to watch that transpire, that was because that's something that I look for in sports. I even do it with my own business. Mm -hmm. I have things that I just I know how to do, but I genuinely don't like or it takes me more time. And I know the people who are better at that specific mm -hmm. piece of the pie than I am. And so I'm willing to pass them off to what I consider a friendly competitor. Um, I don't get a lot back my way, but. I'm also trying to pivot my business away from doing that anyway. So it's no hard feelings. And mm -hmm. some of those guys know that, but to see somebody that you could legitimately be competing against for money, be willing to give you something that you could potentially beat them with. <laughs> it's like, okay, these yeah. guys are okay. Yeah, I see. I yeah. understand. Cause you want it, you want the, it to be reciprocated. You want them to do the same thing for you. Everybody wants a fair game, right? Like everybody wants to be able to say, I beat the best. Right. You don't want to be like, oh, every every time I go to the track, I win because yeah. everybody else's car is blown up. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, for what we do, it's it, the level of uh, it's more show. We put on a show for the fans. Right. So we always race each other in most cases, unless the promoter would prefer us to make singles. But uh, it's really the interaction with the fans. So what I've found, it's, it's, it amazes me. In all these years of racing at various levels, these jet cars get far more attention and mm-hmm. fan appeal than anything I've ever done in competitive racing, where I'm there to qualify and to go rounds and try to beat the other guy in the other lane. Even though we're up there, our big thing is we want to burn the house down, right? We want to do this at night. We want to put a big flame and thunder show on, lots of pops, get everybody excited, play a tune if we can, see if they can figure it out on the on our afterburners, right? And then line up and put side by side. But, man, they love it. And they line up down the block. They buy out T-shirts. They want signatures. We get to take pictures with the kids. My favorite thing is interacting with the kids. Love talking to them. I want to inspire them. I want them to believe that if they have a dream, they can achieve it. And if I can get that across to even one kid in all 24 races this year, I feel like I did a good job. That's it. There was- I witnessed that on Saturday. It was like mm-hmm. a maybe eight, nine-year-old boy. Yeah. And you were so sweet with him. And he was it. so enthralled. Yeah. And you were like, you ready to get in? He was like, yes, <laughs> I'm ready to drive it. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things. It's so funny to see these different kids, right? Some of them are kind of timid. Some mm-hmm. are like, mm-hmm. absolutely not. He was so not. ready. Yeah. This kid, he was like, heck yeah, yeah. man. So I love like, it. I got Absolutely your job. Right. I'm yes. ready. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it makes me happy to see that, to see them light up. And, I, you know, I hope, you know, he remembers that interaction and that means just something to him. And his oh, life. he will definitely remember yes. it. And, uh, you know, then I feel like I'm doing something. I, 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 I have a, a place in this world. You know what I mean? So, and all the racing I did before is so much work. You make a run, we got to tear the whole motor down. We got to take the heads off. You got to take the pistons out of the car. You got to put a new clutch in. You got to do all this stuff. And I didn't really get that interaction with the fans. I was working right. on the car. Then it was hurry up and get to the next round. I got to put all my stuff back on. They're timid to come talk to you. And we weren't out front. If you notice, uh, David's operation, right? Dothan Motorsports, Jet Cars Rock. They got front row center. Yep. Right. We had premium parking. Mm-hmm. Fans can walk right up. They can interact with us. Uh, and we love to do it. There are times I can't even get my car ready. Like, I got to get back my chute, and I'm still signing signatures and stuff. I'm like, hey, we got to take a break. I'll be right back. Don't move, you know? And so it's been a it's been a very fun year, and I really enjoy it. It's a different perspective. What's the best venue? Ooh. That's hard. That is. Especially because we do so much. It's hard to keep track, even. We did one on a Thursday night. And it was just outside of Dayton. It was like Kilcare, Ohio, I think. Mm-hmm. And that one was so cool. Because it, it, it was a weekday. And they had fireworks yes. at the end of the event. So that was nice. it, was, it was a small track, but man, they packed it in. Yes. And the people were so appreciative. And they loved it. And they were there asking questions, taking mm-hmm. pictures, excited. Um, we went up. The promoter was like, we got to go. Because he had to run, he had to light light the fireworks before the no, the curfew. He had a noise curfew, mm-hmm. so we we were the last ones to go down track, and then the fireworks went off, and that was super cool. Nice. Nothing better than that. Mm-hmm. So it was a great you show. Get some cool pictures and videos. Yeah, they're definitely out there. So there's a guy out there, um, photography. I have to connect you with him. Uh, goes by Mister Mustache. Okay. Yes, for a reason. <laughs> awesome. You can. He's got great video. Yes. Great video. He's an amazing guy. He's super cool, and uh, he's got some good video and some uh, good pictures from that too. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So I know a question that both Nona and I, after we heard the story about the pineapple stickers. <laughs> okay. Well, now you have to tell the story. Well, well first, first, okay. I want to know, did you have any part of that? No, I did not. <laughs> yeah, legitimately. That, I just, I'm a pretty respectful person at right. the end of the day, and I wouldn't put a sticker on anybody. I'd always yeah. respect other people's property. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't be right. No. You can tell the story. No, you can tell the story because you're the one who was told the story. You told well, me I the story. So it I didn't really a, tell the story. I was standing so, there while no, she was asking can, him. You can tell the story because <laughs> you have the accurate details. So David's wife, the, the guy that owns the cars, uh, was asking him at the track uh, if he had put stickers on their, their – do you call them – is that a toter home or is that just a motor yeah, home? Yeah, no, it's a okay. toter, yeah, yeah. And – In Wisconsin. yeah. So it, the stickers were put on. Somebody put them yeah. on in Wisconsin. So so initially she didn't say that. She just asked if you had done it. Yeah. Or maybe we just didn't. Larry and I didn't hear it. But Larry was like, I had nothing to do with that. And I was like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I, 
I, I, I don't want to make anybody mad that just invited us out to this event. Like, because I felt like a VIP. I don't know if that's truly a VIP, but I, that's what I felt like. Oh, no, you were. Being it able was, to walk out there. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that was VIP experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, it was awesome being able to actually stand there right by the, the you, we were behind the tree. What's the pit area right there? Is just some pits, yeah. Right. Yeah. So being able to walk out there and stand there and actually take the video from right there, standing right next to the oh, car. on the starting yes. line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, yeah. Not everybody gets that kind yeah. of access. Yeah, so yes. yeah, yeah, special, yeah. The guy that was out there with the 360 camera the whole time, I'm like, dude, you're going to set that thing on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has some good video, though. Did he? Yeah. You saw it already? For sure, yeah. I'll check it. There was a yeah. guy flying a drone, too. Yeah, I saw that yes. video, too. That's you did? really good, too. That one came out really good, yes. too. I'll check that out. Yeah. Do you, do you, is it on social media? Yep, a lot of it's on social media. Yep. yep. Well, anyways, back to the... Pineapple story real quick. <laughs> She's asking if he put these stickers on the front and back of the RV and then one on the back of the trailer. And he's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And of course, you know, like, I don't know how well you are a poker face. So I'm trying to listen in on the story. Like, why are they so upset about these stickers? And she explains what it is. It's an upside down pineapple on a swing. And it says, will swing if pushed. Yep. And apparently they didn't realize they saw two of them but left the track and there was still one on the trailer. Is that this, what happened? That's yes. what she said. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Oh, that's what he, yeah. Okay. That was the story yeah. that was she said way. that he was like furious about it. And I was like, I thought another, cause we went to another track after that. I think we went to Cincinnati after that. And then somebody put one on Cincinnati as well. <laughs> so it was like, they put it on Wisconsin and they also put it on Cincinnati. So it so had to be somebody that was somebody that was in common between yeah. those two places. Yeah. Right. And we do race with a lot of other folks, and we do try to travel together. Yeah. Um, so it's common for us to be in the same places for a couple or a few races in a row. So I think David has a good idea who it might have been. So you need to do a sticker like that. Oh, yeah. And any sticker that pays money goes on there. So, But the pineapple sticker didn't pay any money, so it had to come back <laughs> off. If it came with some money, it could probably stay. Yeah. He'd be a lot less furious. Well, they were talking about the sponsor. That, <laughs> yeah. They were talking about the, the diesel fuel sponsor that yes. they have. Open um, roads. Yeah, and the, mm-hmm. the QR code and stuff that was on yep. there. And so her and I got talking. Well, and apparently she said that she majored in broadcasting. And I was like, oh, shit. I just oh, Robin this. is. She also yes. said that she was a police officer formerly yeah. and a bunch of other stuff. And a yeah. baker. She has done a lot. Yeah. Yeah. She's an amazing woman, very supportive of David and what he mm-hmm. wants to do. I mean, they live on the road doing this. This is their livelihood. I love, love it. I love when she gave Nona and I the tour of the RV and she was talking about all the mirrors and she was like, yeah, pimp owned it before us. And I'm, <laughs> whether or not that story is true or not, when you're giving people a tour of your RV, right after you just talked about a swinger. Right, pineapple. Right. I was like, I'm going to just step on out of here because I'm not a pineapple person. So I'm just leaving. Yeah. yeah the whole the ceiling is like these slatted mirrors. There are mirrors all over the master bedroom. There's just mirrors everywhere. <laughs> this is a very nice RV, though. Yeah, I think it's what do they call it a show hauler. It's one of their premier kind of ones, yeah. and they do they deck them out a little bit nice with that kind of stuff. So, and I I actually learned something because I I had always wondered why I see them a lot of times, and uh, I watched Cleus McFarland on YouTube, and I know yeah. you guys you guys I've seen him, yeah, dislike that kind of racing. I don't know. He he had some words. David had some words. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was like, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't remember what he called it. Yeah. But he was like, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't really like it. He's like, whatever, you know. And, and I mean, I understand. You know, everybody's kind of got their niche, and everybody has the thing that they like. And some people don't like. I don't like the obnoxious ricer, you know, Honda Civics. And I don't like the fart cans and the the <laughs> squatted, squatted trucks. trucks and, he loves squatted trucks yeah. so much. But you know, I, I watching their videos, even though I don't do that, is like kind of entertaining seeing the people they interact with and the kind of events that they do yeah. and stuff like that. Um, completely lost the point of what I was getting at there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the the oh, idea though, go ahead. I was just going to say just her talking about being in broadcasting and stuff. I it's like, that's, you guys should do that. You know, mm-hmm. if you're spending all this money on these jet cars, it doesn't matter how bad the video is initially because you're going to use that as your learning tool. Mm-hmm. If you go back, this will be episode 91. If you go back and look at episode one of this show, you be like, what? Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We didn't have any of these microphones. We didn't have this. We didn't have that. We did have these. Um, mm-hmm. We had this, but it was used for something else. It was used for her computer. 
So, but the quality of the show now comes from having the lighting and right. having the set and having the microphones. We were backed up on the wall in the office in there and we were kind of sitting more side by side. We had nothing behind us. We had, there was nothing to it, but yeah. we just needed to get started. And the very first episode is basically her and I just kind of staring at each other, not knowing what to do. <laughs> yeah. and, and that is something we've talked about this year that we've been trying to do is more um, videos and social media. Mm-hmm. Sarah's been helping with that. Robin's really good at it. Uh, the problem is, you know, I have a full time job yep. and then I do this on the weekends and there's a lot of it. Um, they have their Dothit Motorsports Facebook page and they're trying to get out there. I have my Bennett Family Racing Facebook page. We try to get out there. We try to cross promote, trying to do a lot of work. Her growth on her page, on their page on Dothit Motorsports has gone very good. It's grown quite a bit. Uh, they have jetcarsrock.com on every social media and their website. Um, so we've been trying to build that. We've tried to live stream. We've tried doing videos. We're trying to do that work. But at the same time, we got to get these cars ready. Yes. We got to work on them. And then what goes on between events is you got to get from point A to point B. Well, it never goes perfectly smooth. There's always blowouts. Mm -hmm. There's always, uh, you know, you're stuck on the highway for hours at a time because the road's closed because of an accident or whatever. So it's a lot. That's a lot, right? And so where we need help is somebody who can help bring that to us and Mm -hmm. do that production type of work that we are unable to do. Because I volunteer, Andrew. There you go. (laughs) Yeah, and so that that's where You're there, do is some a need. Then. there is a <laughs> Please need. Please take him. I beg of yeah. you. Because as you know, it's not just filming this, right? right. It's the editing. Yep. And it's the the promoting it and continuing making the clips and getting people interested, right? Um, and and interacting with the viewership. It's like we try to interact and stay engaged with it, but it's challenging. You know, we have a lot going on and we do need some help there. That's why you need like a teenager. Yeah, somebody who's wanting to be out there filming all the time. Maybe not necessarily editing, because a lot of a lot of kids and teenagers only want one part of the job. Like mm-hmm. I just want to play on my phone. I'll record you. Yep. But I don't want to do any of the other stuff. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I met I met this kid in Wilmington that was uh, in film school, and he was. I, I have a side project that I want to work on at some point that I'm, I'll share later. But uh, and basically, it, the cost to do it was just not something I was willing to take on right now. But yeah. The idea was really solid. And to get out there and follow us around and just document it, there's a great story to be told. I mean, the things that we run into every day, are they're interesting. I think a lot of people would find it interesting. And there's a great story to be told. Um, There's a lot of people out there. I'm kind of giving away some of my idea. But there's a lot of people out there that have, have wanted to do something in life. And maybe fell short of it. Or didn't really get to the, the level that they hoped they would get to. And... You know, that's an interesting story to tell. What did they do with that? You know, for me, I went through some uh, really dark times not doing what I thought I wanted to do in life. Right. You know, some people would say, well, you flew airplanes in the Air Force. That was probably good enough. But like, no, that wasn't. And I was really lost for a long time trying to figure some of that stuff out. Would you consider yourself found now? No. <laughs> Are you always searching? No, because I'm a I discontented yeah. person. Yeah. You're always well, searching. Always. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that uh, it's just part of my nature. I have to see, you know, Sarah knows this. We'll walk mm-hmm. on the beach. If there, if there's like something, st- you know, a jetty sticking out, I have to see what's around the other side of that jetty. Mm-hmm. I cannot stop till I get around that. It's, I have to see what's around the next corner. I have to see the next thing. I can't be content with just right here, right now. Content. Yeah. Does it lead to contentment? Sometimes. Absolutely, it can. Okay. Yeah. Um, so obviously you guys are very busy, and yeah. you said yes. you work full-time. Do you work, or you stay yeah, at home? I stay at home. Okay. And, well, obviously you assist him, so that yes. is a full-time no. job. That and is a full-time <laughs> job. Most everybody I work with know her as my assistant, Yeah, okay, actually. yeah, yeah. So yeah, because I, yeah. I work from home, okay. so my office. Oh, then, you do? Yes, you work I from do. home? I work from oh, home, but, but you I, travel. I travel Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, but, yeah, she'll bring me my lunch while I'm on meetings. Oh, and it's so that. nice. Yeah, she, she's always there and always very supportive. And mm-hmm. anything I need, she's there for me. So it's awesome. That's yeah. really sweet. Yeah. How would you say that this 24-7, 365 lifestyle has impacted your guys' marriage? It hasn't been bad, really. It's, it's how we are. No, we've enjoyed 
the yeah. just go, 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 yeah. go, no it's, downtime Every at now all. and then we think, oh, this is just too much. But we just like it. We'll, we'll we, say, we, we'll slow down. Yeah. And then she'll get a text from our friends, be like, want to go to a concert on Sunday? We're like, yeah, we're in. Uh, yeah, we'll be <laughs> How was that concert, by the way? It was, it was good. good. It was great. Yeah, yeah we liked it's it. It's like kind of club music, right? Like techno-y-ish. Um, yes. yeah. 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 Uh, it was the midnight, which is, we had no idea. Mm-hmm. Complete surprise to us. Like okay, a, so you just blindly said yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, we're just coming okay. back from two hours <gasps> drive. Yeah, you know, when she check. told me midnight, I was like, and who are they? Yes. It's like, oh, I just randomly found them like seven years ago. And yeah. it's just really my thing. I was like, okay, I've never heard of them. Have yeah. fun. It was cool. But I mean, <laughs> that, that's, that's the fun part of life, right? Mm-hmm. Is if you're open-minded. I mean, maybe not like pineapple sticker open-minded. <laughs> yeah, there's certain things that I just run far away from. Okay. But like, that's, yeah. far away. Right, right. But I'm just <laughs> saying open-minded as far as like you're open-minded to something as fun as going to a concert you've never heard of. A, right. Band. Why not? Okay. We've actually done okay. it. It could turn out to be your next new favorite. Yeah. True, true. Very true. Uh, I'm okay. um, I'm good. So please say that again so that he can hear you because I have said exactly that hey, to I started, him. I started drinking wine because I went to a winery. I hated wine before. Really? Yeah. Hmm. There you go. Okay, yeah. but I have asked him to do so many things. It's always no. Mm-hmm. Always no. He always says no first. And then sometimes if I push, 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 or come on, we really haven't done anything. And so, so it, we live yeah. we live a very different life than you but, guys do. So it is mind boggling to me. And we weren't always there, right? It's taken time. We have grown together through the years into this. There are certain things that I didn't enjoy doing or didn't like doing that I do now. Okay. He was just sure. a racer before. I, yeah. That's how, how I grew it? up. Yeah. Okay. There were no vacations. It was, we go from race A, we, we were racing here, we're racing. That was my childhood. Mm-hmm. We didn't stop at Disneyland on the way or right, anything like right. that. So I have grown into more of that. Like we'll stop and we'll go to an amusement park, which is something my parents would have never mm-hmm. done, right? You said on Saturday that one of your favorite things about going every single weekend mm-hmm. is kind of making it an extended and seeing America, Choices. essentially. Right. Yes. We've gotten to see so much of the East Coast. It's been awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just, from one race to the other, in the middle, we're stopping and seeing just all these different random. things. Yeah, random things. What was your favorite thing this year? I mean, we've we've seen a lot of historical sites that just... Mm -hmm. Waterfalls. We'll just go hike a waterfall somewhere. Because when you're driving really far distances, why not go for a hike somewhere? Yeah. We'll Google waterfall and end up in some random waterfall in the middle of nowhere. Um, uh, Go ahead. We were driving... Her and I had gone to Niagara Falls Mm -hmm. last year, I think. We were driving up in that direction. Jaden hadn't been to Niagara Falls. It was 40 starting, minutes away. We're like, hey, we're right here. Let's Might drop well. in there. We dr- literally drive in, unload our bicycles, jam out to Niagara Falls. There it is. Cool. All right. Back to the motor and load them up <laughs> on the road. And yeah. that was how it went. So I'm the, I'm the kind of person where the trip has to either be designed around those places. Like it has to be on my route. I'm very competitive even with Google Maps. Mm-hmm. My st- This time that I see when I start, I have to beat that even if I have to make three or four or five fuel stops or food stops or whatever along the way. So I love to travel at night. Mm-hmm. I'll, it doesn't matter to me what the conditions are. If I can drive at night when nobody else is on the road, that's awesome to me until you run into a situation where the gas stations aren't open. Right. But <laughs> yeah. So I used to be like that. Yeah. And what I've, what I've found is, is that it's really limiting my life and my happiness as well. My joy, because I'm closed minded to what opportunities are out there that I'm not discovering. So I've learned to relax a little bit because I was always very uptight. Mm-hmm. Stop and smell. And I will be. Is. And there will be days mm-hmm. that I get that way where I'll be I've like. I literally said exactly that yeah. to him. Mm-hmm. I'll be I like, used to take the kids on so many road trips and just adventures just yeah. to see. Mm-hmm. And he's like, that's dumb. I didn't say that's dumb. That's dumb. It's just that I'm in pain. That's and that's that's fair. I mean, we've gone. We we were driving. We took a ran. We had a race weekend off for some reason, and her mom was watching the kids, and we just drove from here to oh, yes. through North Carolina randomly. We saw all of North Carolina. Nice. And we were like, hey, 
I forget what was going on, but we like Googled something and we ended up at like a Civil War reenactment. Oh, yeah. Thing. I looked out up of his, nowhere. I looked up historical stuff. That's like, so oh, let's go here. We went there and they were literally having an event there. They're all dressed so up. It was they got awesome. The we got to cannons, yep. the bayonets, the, yep. they had the house open up with the fire and the cooking food that they yep. gave us. And yeah. they were closing up by the time we got there because we didn't know what was going right, on. Right, right. Show up. Right. So everybody was gone. So we got like. First class treatment. They were like mm-hmm. telling us everything about their muskets and giving mm-hmm. food and what an amazing experience that mm-hmm. had I was trying because I was like that. I've been that mm-hmm. way too. If I was trying to be, you know, we're trying to get to wherever we were going. I don't know. No, but part of it is, hey, we are going to stop at random places. If yeah. I see something, then we're stopping there. We do. Yep. yep. We ended up at a cherry wine festival on that yes. same trip randomly. Yeah. <laughs> Were you in Traverse City? <laughs> no. Top, top, well, no, I don't remember no. where that was. Yeah, somewhere in North Carolina. So, traveling with my parents when I was a kid, coming, so we vacationed here a lot. Mm-hmm. But my dad was huge into NASCAR, loved NASCAR. I watched it growing up. I, wa- I used to watch drag racing, I, you know, NHRA, IHRA. Uh, I watched probably the only race, the only two races that I watched consistently are Daytona. In the Indy 500. Okay. I mean, I'm from Indiana too, so yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, um, so. yeah. So we, my dad had an RV, not like you guys have, mm-hmm. you know, older because this is 20 plus years ago. Um, but we would go to like Talladega, Charlotte, all these other places. I've been to a ton of them. I don't remember very much of it at all, but we would do stuff along the way, and I think that's a big difference with having an RV. Because mm-hmm. your lodging is built in. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you can go off and then get caught up in something and you're not worried about making your reservation mm-hmm. or not getting to the next town in time or whatever. And I think there's a big difference in the, the comfort level, obviously. You're not moving very fast, but riding in an RV where you can just get up and go to the bathroom oh, yeah. or mm-hmm. you can cook a little bit of food or sit there on your laptop and you're not crammed with Four kids in the car, even mm-hmm. in a suburban, mm-hmm. four kids packed on a trip. Oh, sure. It's still crowded. Mm-hmm. An RV, while not huge, mm-hmm. you have real TVs mm-hmm. and a real refrigerator and stuff. So, I mean, I, I definitely see it both ways. And I definitely wish, you know, one day we could afford that kind of lifestyle. Maybe we will. Uh, cash has a plan to hit the lottery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or sponsors. <laughs> yeah. Looking directly at you. And, <laughs> and the cool thing about a motorhome is that's a rolling billboard, right? Right, well, exactly. So for a sponsor, exactly. Have, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're promoting them that, nonstop down the highways of America. That was that was my one of the things I was getting to earlier about mm-hmm. Cletus and, and you guys with oh, the yeah. with the all white mm-hmm. billboard. Mm-hmm. Somebody I think Larry asked them why they didn't have anything on there and they said well as soon as you slap on a a wrap or whatever now you're commercial commercial. Mm -hmm. and you have to go through all the different waypoints and Mm -hmm. you have to have different insurance Mm -hmm. i was like that's ridiculous you're doing the same job at the end of the day yeah Mm -hmm. motorhome doesn't have to do that so i can put whatever i want on that motorhome i'm not commercial but the trailer there for them it is yeah interesting Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep that sucks is that a state by state thing or is that nationwide? Uh, and that's the thing about DOT, right? I, I'm not certainly no expert, don't claim to be, but I think it depends on the state. So, whereas like in California, you're limited to, I know this because we had a much bigger motorhome before. Like we had a 40 foot and I towed a 28 foot tag trailer, which is 73 feet of stuff, was uh, illegal in California, right? Do you have to have CDL 65. when you do it? No, there's yeah, a limit. Just, there's an overall yeah. limit. Oh. Yeah. And so, Certain states, you, you'd be illegal in California, but you get to Arizona, you're illegal. So how does that work, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the challenging part about a lot of that stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, how do you – I'm assuming because enough rich and famous people and billionaires pass through there, there has to be a carve-out for exceptions. Do you know of any? No. No, it's just you better comply. Yeah, or don't yeah, get caught. Gavin Newsom in your cell phone when you yeah. go through California. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Only him and his buddies get away with. Stuff. I can't say that on here. Yeah, you can. <laughs> that's, but that's that's crazy to me because okay, so let, let's take helmet laws for motorcycles, for example, mm-hmm. right? Or even firearms laws and, and state reciprocity and stuff. People that are 
you know, if, if you're carrying between state lines or if you're on a motorcycle and you know that your state doesn't, but the next state does, you carry your helmet with you mm-hmm. or you have your little card with you or you specifically get licensed in the state that you're driving through. Yep. Like, why would you force people to buy another vehicle or another trailer specifically to drive through your state when the purpose of their travel to your state is to spend money and bring money to your state. Mm-hmm. Yep. California is notorious for setting highway patrol units outside of a race venue and busting guys as they pull out. Wow. Yep. For over length. They've done it before. Mm-hmm. You're going to have a bunch of guys with a uh, um, little gooseneck install installations in their dually trucks yeah. pull your trailer out of there get you the right. state line and then hook up. hook up yeah that's what they did a lot of them do but it's also the state that at one point had a website specifically so you could tell on your neighbor if they have an out-of-state plate permanently on their trailer or motorhome or whatever they yeah. they were talking about why they're never going to get rid of uh their montana registration because they have a lifetime they paid like 400 dollars or something that's for one that's awesome mm-hmm. we have friends that's that live what in i have montana. to pay a year yeah. yeah yeah we have friends that live in montana and like I know she would never live there, at least not full time. She might live there through the summer months. Yeah, I could handle like June, July, yeah. maybe August. I agree. Yeah. But that's it. Yep. No snow for me. No. No Same. snow for me. Well, her first real experience with snow was going back to my hometown a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and we got hit with a blizzard in 40 below zero. In Indianapolis. Just north, two hours north yeah, of there. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. I've been out there. So, that time of year. The, the, what was it? The, very the day that we got there yeah right yeah, yeah. They got it hit. was it was like 30 degrees when we pulled in yep. and then just kept dropping kept dropping kept dropping kept dropping mm-hmm. and then it was like negative 40 Not by the time we so she she wanted to do settled. some last minute last christmas winter. shopping yeah. and stuff yeah. yeah so we had to hit costco and a bunch of random places before everything closed down but and for something to close down up there it's for, huge. for, a, for a, a blizzard or snowstorm of any kind would be like north carolina any like a Waffle House closing down for a Category Five, mm. it has to be crazy. Oh wow! And I mean, forty below. We drove. I took them. Um, we took my little brother. I have a brother the same age as Cooper. We took him to his dad's, which is out close to Lake Michigan, cl- about forty-five minutes from Chicago. And then I wanted to take them up to St. Joe, Michigan, which is right by South Haven, where um, oh my gosh, the Gingerman Raceway is. I wanted to drive them up there and we got on the highway on, on 74 and there were semis already sliding and everything. And we her suburban was brand new at the time. This was two years ago, this, this December. And she's like, please get off this highway. Please get off. Cause there's people just sliding all over the place. You can't see the lanes in the road. They had never experienced anything like this before. So we get off, we take a bunch of back roads. I know the whole area and up there, it's not like here where everything merges and it's like swervy everything's mm-hmm. a grid up there so if this road's blocked you just go block over and go this way right mm-hmm. so we get up there we walk out and i take them to silver beach in st joe michigan silver beach on lake michigan and the waves are frozen Whoa. Wow. so we walked out onto the pier for the st joe river and the kids just see this these ice sheets just ice waves floating. Wow. yeah hmm. And they're out there bundled in like 12 layers. You can't, you can't even see their faces. They're so, they look like little Eskimo kids, and all you can see is like this. <laughs> and it was still snowing like crazy, too. Yeah. And I, 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 made a, I made a little, a funny little video and picture. She, she took them from me from inside. I went out and ate my breakfast for my birthday in the blizzard, wearing <laughs> shorts and a t shirt, or shorts and a hoodie. Nice. He's nice. special. <laughs> so special. And she wonders, she's like, it's like really cold. I'm like, I'm sweating. <laughs> Whatever. You went inside and you put more clothes on. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I ate my whole breakfast. Well, liar. <laughs> the kids think it's crazy if I put jeans on. They're mm-hmm. like, something is wrong. Mm-hmm. The world is ending because Andrew's wearing <laughs> pants. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nona, do you have questions? Yeah, but mine don't pertain to racing at all. So They're all good. relationships. So we can we can shift. We can okay, shift. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. What do you guys do to make your marriage a priority? Oh, we go on dates. We date. 
Um, we have an anniversary trip every year, but we also have other trips that we do, like yeah. just little minor, small trips that we do together. Where are you guys going this year for your anniversary? You know, a lot of times it's like a last minute <gasps> thing. Okay, guess. where'd you guys go last year then? Where did we go uh, last year? This year's been weird because we did all the racing. Yeah. We did Cancun this year, but that was with the kids. We took we did go to Paris for an anniversary. We did do Paris. Nice. We did do that. That was nice. Done Spain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot we're of going, take we're, notes, <laughs> Andrew. We're, we're going to the place where we got married within about a week of our anniversary. So for a long time we were doing secrets resorts, which are all inclusive. Really high end, nice, super nice places. Okay. And we were doing those for a long time. We just go for like five nice. or six days. Yeah. Why not anymore? Just uh, because you've done them all? No, no, not at all. I mm-hmm. think we just trying to get a little more variety and okay. do some different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, we always try to do something special. Mm-hmm. We always put each other first. Mm-hmm. So you know, she spoils me. I spoil her. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely meet each other's needs. Yep. Take notes again. <laughs> <laughs> she's got the notebook she writes my notes for me even in my meetings she writes my notes for me but in fairness she i mean you know sarah's my my best friend like I, I just i love we we travel so good together yes, we uh we enjoy each other's company we're just really good mm-hmm. together it just it just really kind of works i mean i'm not saying it's always perfect we've definitely had some blowouts mm-hmm. but uh but it works you guys have been married for 20 years or 19. almost 19. almost okay it's mm-hmm. 19 together for 20 yeah mm-hmm. But you guys were married separately previously. Mm-hmm. You yeah. more than once? I needed a couple rounds of training. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, you know what it really is? I had to give away half of everything I own. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that I could be grateful for what I had in life. <laughs> now I'm more grateful. I was young. I just, I didn't know which way to put the toilet paper on the bowl. Okay. <laughs> took a couple Okay, hours. so are you over or under? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's whatever she over. says, right? Yeah. Over. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so over, yes. over because she's answer. right and he's That's wrong. Right. But I do put the toilet seat down all the time now. Yeah, for the most part. So for you know the rare occasion when you forget. So I do things for a different reason that women tend to appreciate because they think I'm doing it for them. Like the toilet seat, I do it so any dog that I've ever had currently or in the past won't drink out of the toilet. But they're like, oh, he puts the toilet seat down or toilet mm-hmm. lid down. Nope, I just did it so the dog won't drink out of the toilet. No, I had to give well, away half of everything. It's not special that. when you say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Right. You were getting credit, but you're not getting exactly. credit. Exactly. Well, I, I do that. I, I make sure that they know that I'm not doing it for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Her face says it all. But I, I don't want to, I don't, I, I genuinely don't want to take credit for something that I'm doing, not for the reason why they think I'm doing it. It's, because I, for one, I'm, she'll tell you this, I'm probably autistic. So I, I have this urge that I have to say these things. I can't lie about it. And when you're like, oh, you're doing it for this. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that's not why. But if that's what you want to think and it makes you feel better than sure. But no. <laughs> you're exhausting, exhausting, exhausting. But it's been a lot of work. I mean, we've mm-hmm. really, both of us have grown in those 20 mm-hmm. years tremendously. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you know, I've come a long way. She's come a long way. We met, she, met each other in the middle. Brianna's calling me. Mm. You can step back. We can, is it, yeah. we can pause it. Yeah, yeah, let's do a pause because I want to check right. It's probably. We'll be right back. Let me. Hey, talking to my daughter. Yeah, we're back. Game on. Well, I meant, no, okay. So, yeah, I did. <laughs> I, to answer your question, I did. Pause for that. Right. I'm, I'm just saying I wasn't going to edit the gap. We so we're just, back. We can't just say car and everybody moves out of the way and then game on. No, no yeah, you okay. can. Yeah. Game on. Yeah. <laughs> back to you, Nona. Okay. What do you each do to make the other one feel special? She's asking because she wants me to feel bad. <laughs> oh, I'm genuinely curious. A 20 year marriage or almost 20 year mm-hmm. marriage is almost an anomaly at this point. We yeah. talked about that earlier too. So, what do we do to make each other feel special? Well, lately, 
we've been just sending each other really cute things that we find on the internet, like little cute couples saying really cute things together and then sending that to each other. We've been doing a lot of that lately. Yeah, yeah. it's been helpful. But I mean, I think it's just knowing what the other person, what they want, right? And trying to meet those wants and needs um, without being asked, mm -hmm. right? So it's just reading the other person, being in tune with them, and being yeah. there for them. My back hurts, so then I massage his back. Mm -hmm. Hip hurts or whatever, you know. I'm hungry. Feed him. I have, nothing, <laughs> I have nothing to wear. Oh, you should buy a new dress. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what you just said, without being asked, that mm -hmm. is the most important part of it. Mm -hmm. Because once you have to ask for it, then it is, it's lost its value, essentially. It is. I mean, it's really easy to nitpick at things, too, though, mm -hmm. right? If you start to focus on something, it just gets bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. If you just go with the flow and genuinely just try to be happy and... Because um, we do ask. Sometimes we'll say, hey, I want this because we're not getting it. And right. then we just try to be, not get offended or mad or take it personally and then just do it. Yeah. Being we'll receptive. Have a yes. We'll, we'll definitely get in. I'll be like, hey, I need this. And she'll be like, bah, bah, bah. and I'll be like, I'll realize that I'm being overly sensitive or I'm being stupid or whatever. And then a man admitting yeah. to being overly <laughs> sensitive. Oh, my so, God. My mind is blown right now. You're going to hate me right here. But I'm going to tell you the number one thing after 20 years, the secret to success is I'm wrong. She's right. <laughs> that's it's just, literally our it, fucking podcast, a, yes. so perfect. It's just absolutely 100% <laughs> it. It, is, it works better that way. We have an ongoing joke where I do this thing where I'm like, yeah, I was wrong. You're right. I'm ugly. You're beautiful. You're smart. And I'm dumb. You should see. <laughs> I'm usually happy after that. I don't even remember what it was it works for out. And life goes on. Because here's my theory, right? Here's my theory is what do we want as guys? What is our number one thing, at least for me as a guy? My, I'm very motivated by certain intimacy, right? Mm -hmm. So if she's not happy, I don't get my intimacy. I would rather be wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would rather be right and admit that I'm wrong and get intimacy <laughs> than be right and she know I'm right and I don't get the intimacy. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I can say I'm wrong and I, even, mm -hmm. even if I am wrong. And as long as I get that intimacy, I'm a happy guy. She's wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, got, you should see how many people, specifically in two places, Reddit and YouTube, people that get mad just at the title of the podcast. I'm not watching this because it's bullshit. The title is dumb. I'm like, that's the whole reason I picked. I picked the name, people. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we get we get commenters. I get people that they're like, oh this, oh my god, this one guy. He went on a whole like 20 paragraph long tirade. And at first I wasn't going to read it. And then I skimmed and I read one sentence. I was like, okay, game on. I'm going to read what this guy had to say. And he was like, I was married for this long and I played the game and she was such a bitch and all this. And I would never, I will never date another woman where she won't just know that I'm right all the time. And just went on and on and Is on. Is he still single? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> And I was like, man, dude, like you are really miserable because I don't even know who you are. And you felt the need to tell me this entire story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, dynamics are different for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. What works for us in our relationship, in our home, with our kids and everything else, right? Our in-laws, whatever, that dynamic mm -hmm. is totally different than somebody else's. And it's a lot of it's personality based. We're trying to, it's, you know, we're trying to help our kids understand that too, right? Like. You can be one person with one person, like, you know, just two people meet and act completely different with somebody completely, somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, Sarah's a different person with me than she was before. I'm a different person with her mm -hmm, sure. than I was before. And that dynamic works for us. And while I can say, yeah, me admitting that I'm wrong works, I could go into another relationship and that would never work, right? I could be very upset and have a lot of contempt and everything mm -hmm. else. So it just, it's, it's. It depends. It's like it goes back to what we were saying earlier about parenting. There's no right answer. Well, see, so the way I was raised, my parents got divorced when I was in eighth grade, roughly, I think. And my experience as a, as a kid, because so having parents that got divorced that late, I felt like 
I was still not the kids that I knew that grew up that had divorced parents. Mm. And my parents always showed up to everything. Both of them always showed up to everything for me, for my brothers, all the time. So that's what I knew growing up Mm. as what your parents were supposed to do. And so I've gone to all of the kids' events, and their dad doesn't show up, mm-hmm. and the kids excuse it away for him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, that's fucking bullshit. Like, mm-hmm. my parents, I don't know what all they went through, but I can assume based on what they were doing and how much. My, my mom, my dad owned his company, mm-hmm. so it wasn't as hard for him. But for my mom, you know, bouncing around, doing different things, or being unemployed, and you know, just whatever and still showing up for things because my mom was like PTA and all that other stuff. She was always involved. She knew all the people, all my teachers always knew who my parents were. And I thought that's just the normal. I didn't realize that other people didn't do that. And then going to all the kids, you know, sporting events or school recitals and all this kind of stuff. And their dad's never there. And I was like, what a fucking piece of shit. And they're, they're Today, people are like, oh, that's normal. I'm like, yeah. I mean, my, my parents didn't support me in anything. They didn't encourage me to do anything. They didn't support me in anything. Their their vision in life was racing and 100% racing and everything else was whatever. Like, So I got nothing, right? I turned out fine. I mean, mo- somewhat stable and as I guess one could be. <laughs> but uh, and we support face. our kids. I mean, but it, I, I think mm-hmm. it just, you know, well, it depends. Different kids are also... Re- receptive to different things and learn differently based on Mm -hmm. the, so Mm -hmm. I would say I'm the kind of person that would look at the negative scenario and be like, okay, well, I understand why and I don't like it. And I would learn and adapt from it. Mm -hmm. But then I also know kids who, you know, stop going to school and this and that because mom missed one thing, you know, it's tough. Yeah. There's no perfect formula. Yeah. I mean, I think Chris was became very driven to succeed because of that, though. I mean, we all we all come away from our childhood with stuff. Mm-hmm. And we joke with our kids, we're like, we're going to give you guys a notebook, and you need to take notes and keep a diary because we're going to save you a fortune in therapy when you're an adult. <laughs> Just reference back to yes. October third, yep. two thousand eighteen, oh when, when I grounded you yep. because you didn't clean your room and I took your phone away. Yes. And just and open up that something. page, and yeah. that's going to explain why now you're a shopaholic. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> do you want to let Bella yeah. out, or do you want me to let her out? I, I will. I was getting ready to ask Sarah a question, but <laughs> you guys keep talking. I'm going to let Bella out. Um, I had a question right there on the tip of my tongue, and now, of course, I can't. She's not in there. She's upstairs. Yeah, she's the squealy, squeaky allergy dog. Yeah. Mm. Um, no, the oh my gosh! Go ahead, and ask your question because now it's completely gone. I'm gonna say. All right, so this one's specifically for you. Okay. Outside of your marriage and parenthood, what do you do to make yourself special? What do I do for myself? Mm-hmm. He's obviously got racing. Yes. So what do you do for yourself? Um, honestly, since we moved here, I stopped doing a lot of stuff for myself. We are super busy. Right. But I would, before I would be doing like, um, I went to, I would do church groups a lot. And then um, I would hang out with my friends a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, just doing stuff like that, hanging out with friends. Are you going to pick that up? Um, I mean, I need to. I need to. But right now, we're just so busy doing racing and this has been fun and i've been more interactive with the racing doing the jet cars than any other race okay okay because he he literally needs you right yeah well not necessarily but it does um it's definitely helps me it helps that i'm there okay to help him okay it is much better experience for me when she's there i do not enjoy it nearly as much when she's not and Aww. so when we first were, when he first was racing, I would back him up. I would cook for the guys. I would take, I would do the photography, and then I got pregnant, mm-hmm. and then I couldn't do any of that stuff anymore. And so now I get to put him in a suit, help him with the car, and so it's fun. Fun. Yeah. I wanted to say earlier, and it just came back to me right now. And actually, you hear me say this when I the second video when you guys went down the track side by side. You hear me say it. I was like, I love the parade wave. I didn't get it in the video, but when you guys were going down the track and the 
do you call it a tow car? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw you guys doing the, yeah. as you were going on the track, yeah. I was like, that's hilarious. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Well, listening, you know, David's daughter, Catherine, is 12. Jaden is 12. Mm-hmm. Um, and David and I grew up together kind of the same age doing this mm-hmm. stuff. It's cool to see the multi-generational. And, you know, when I told my, when I called my stepdad that I grew up with, and said that I was going to do this. He knew David's dad. He's like, oh, yeah, David, I saw him Orange mm-hmm. County back in the day and his wheel standard, candy apple red. And I was like, okay, you guys are crazy. <laughs> so it's just neat seeing the multi-generations and doing this. And it's it's really, you know, it's, it's family, you know. And for a long time, I felt like my entire family was drag racing. That was my identity. That's who I was. Uh, when I quit drag racing and walked away for a very long time, um, I mean, I can count on one hand in that seven years how many people reached out to me and asked me how I was, what was going on. And that crushed me. That really hurt that this community that I spent my entire life around that I knew best really didn't care what happened to me. I was there one day and gone the next and nobody really cared. Mm-hmm. Last year, year, year and a half ago, Sarah and I went to a race in Maryland. And we'd no, I've never really raced a lot on the East Coast. I've done... A little bit, but not a lot. So we go to this race in Maryland. We walk through the gate, and we're walking up to the, kind of the, where all the cars are at. David sees me from far away and immediately is, Chris Bennett, what the hell are you doing out here? I haven't seen you in forever. How are it? And it meant so much to me in that moment. Mm-hmm. And just talking to him, and he knew, you know, it was just, it was like, wow, that was really cool. And I, every time I talked to him, I always asked him, I was like, hey, can I drive one of your jet cars? And his answer is always the same. Sure, if you pay me. Mm-hmm. I'm not the kind of guy that pays to drive cars for right, people. Right. I just don't. Mm-hmm. I've always had my own. So uh, when he called me later on in the year and was like, hey, I need a driver. Are you interested? It was it was just one of those things where it's like doors opening in life. Right. Mm-hmm. Things are meant to be. It was lining up. I had just sold my road race car. I had sold my trailer. I sold my truck. I was done with racing. Fully going to retire. And David called me up not three weeks later and was like, you want to <laughs> drive for me? It was awesome. But you want to talk about marriage? <laughs> <laughs> no. It all, it all relates together. It all does. Mm-hmm. So you guys met 20 years ago. Yes. If you could go back in time 20 years ago, what would you tell yourself, 20, your, your 20-year-old self, or however you are old when you met? I would tell myself to not be so controlling and so... Jealous. I spent a lot of years being very jealous and Mm. very controlling and worried about Sarah. And I regret a lot of the things I did early on in our marriage of how I behaved as a husband. And I've grown from that now, and I'm so much better. I have a lot more work to do, but that is something that I would change. Was this before or after she got pregnant with Um, your daughter? I think it was the entire time, yeah. yeah. It was the entire time, yeah, so... It's just a, something I'm not proud of. Um, but, you know, I, I really try to look at myself as a person and grow and become a better person mm-hmm. every day, every month, every year. My goal is to be better version of myself in the future all the time. That should That's be everybody's goal. Right. Mm, I mean, I'm already perfect. Shut <laughs> <laughs> the fuck up. <laughs> <sighs> He's exhausting. <laughs> It's exhausting. Yeah. Which one do you want? I have to uh, drive us back. Home. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pot, I'm gonna be a responsible adult. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. That's why I didn't. Thank you. That's yeah. why I didn't partake in uh, David's post race oh, ritual. Yes. Sure. Yeah. We got to you got to do, you gotta yeah. do the right thing. Yeah. You know. So yeah. he it seemed like it hit him hard. He it, worked his butt off. Yeah. 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 Well, he was, yeah, he was yeah. probably super tired too. But yeah. I was like, right at the end, I was like. And you either have a really low tolerance or you're really, yeah. really tired that he, I mean, that's, I'm not saying anything bad about the guy. I just was like, he was like super hyper focused. He was, he, his personality didn't change. It was just, it seemed like he was like ready to crash. And then I felt, and she probably felt this too. Like we overstayed our welcome. Oh, not at all. And not, I, I don't, I don't mean that like in that kind of bad way, but like, you know, when you're a, you're hosting a party and everybody's kind of getting tired, but you have one group of people who feels like they have to stay because you put on this big party. And then you have the other group of people who are like, I'm just leaving. Mm-hmm. And 
I felt like we were like, okay, uh, like we're here on you guys' dime essentially. We don't want to leave early, but you guys really seem like you're tired and we just saw you bust your ass for hours and hours and hours while we just sat around and did not, not that like we could be any help, yeah. but you guys are out here tearing down cars and literally fucking rocket science. <laughs> and here we are shooting the shit and just walking around and doing whatever, you know? So like, it, it just felt like maybe you should get some sleep. We'll, we'll, we'll head home now. They actually stay up pretty late. They do. They're yeah. used to, like a lot of times we're not done until like midnight or yeah. one or something. Yeah. You, know? you did mention that so, a couple times there. And so they're used to staying up late and getting up late. So, so this event was unusual because we was. all started out earlier in the morning because mm -hmm. we had to run. Our first run was at one, one, right? Yep. And that that's unusual. Normally, we're not up and doing that. And it was actually pretty busy getting ready for that first run. Uh, and they don't usually get up until later anyway. Mm -hmm. And then running all day. So usually when we run, we run, you know, 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock is yep. typically when we run, right? So then afterwards, then everybody hangs day. out. Yeah. It naturally times out mm -hmm. because everybody's like, we got to get back home. It's mm -hmm. already 1030. Mm -hmm. We're taking off, and then we can load the cars, and then we call it a night, hang out, have a couple of drinks, whatever, and, and go to bed. This one was different. You know, now it's 7 o'clock, and we still got to load cars, and then it was yeah. 9 o'clock, and we still got to load cars, mm -hmm. and then it was 10 o'clock, and it was like, we want to go to bed, and we still got to load cars. <laughs> yeah. So I, here's a here, – I guess it's like a two, maybe three-part question. How difficult would you be? Would it be for you to make a pass down the track at night without lights? Would it be basically impossible, or do you think nothing's impossible, my friend? <laughs> so, so the reason I ask is because I've seen a lot of stadiums and venues have switched to LEDs, which you know, mm. obviously those uh, like what are they sodium, they're like sodium something lamps that take forever to heat up and turn on. So all these you know sporting venues like Michigan did it last year. I think I also just saw Alabama did it. And so they can do all kinds because you can change the colors and they can, they're instantly on, instantly off. So you can do all yeah. kinds of like weird things with it. Mm -hmm. And I was just imagining you guys talked about how much cooler it is to drive down the track with those cars at night yep. because the flame looks cooler, all of it looks cooler. Mm -hmm. So has there been a venue where they could like turn the lights off as you're driving down and yeah. then turn them right back on? Yeah. So I'll start by saying safety is number one. Right. So it is paramount. The guys have died doing this and recently and well it, i mean though, david has a huge scar that's does. crazy and the cars are safe we wear all the right safety equipment they're inspected by nhra like we follow all the rules right but things happen and i mean even recently guys have died and close friends of david and robin and things like this right so safety is number one that said yeah there are situations like st louis it has a lot of stadium lighting was very bright they turned half the lights off mm -hmm. and we were comfortable running so it's really up to the comfort of the driver. Um, I'm pretty comfortable in a lot of situations. I've driven down some really dark tracks, um, especially in a, in a nitro car that puts out flame. If you've ever seen the flames out of a nitro car, and then you're just looking down a tunnel of flames, and it's pretty wild, but it's pretty cool, too. Yeah. So, and I've been to some pretty dark tracks, but I, I would do it. It just depends on the situation and the track. We go to a lot of tracks that have really short shutdowns, and we're both like shoots out early, on the brakes early, trying to get the car stopped. Uh, we ran in, um, it was uh, Muncie, Indiana. Yep. Muncie, Indiana has grass in their shutdown in the oh. middle. So if you get off to one side and you get in yeah. the grass, you're in trouble. That was a little bit a little bit spooky for us. But, yeah. uh, or for me. I think David had been there before. But first time for me. But it wasn't that big a deal. But the red car likes to go right when I hit the chutes. Yeah. And all I could think that. about was going into the grass and then trying to recover in the grass. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. my my hometown track, when it was first built, they ran from east to west. And then they built a road and that became uh where the staging lanes were ran kind yeah. of by that road. And so they turned the track the other way to run west to east, um, before I was even born, I think. But when they did that, they actually shortened the shutdown. Yeah. And so the, the problem with running east to west was that if the car didn't shut down, now you're T-boning somebody on the road. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We've yeah. been at tracks like that. Yeah, they have to yeah. shut the road down when we make our yeah. runs wow. in case we go 
too far yes. into mm-hmm. the road. Yeah. yeah. So the cops will be out there to mm-hmm. shut the roads down for us. Yeah. So let me ask you this then. Which would you prefer? Not being able to shut down and hitting a tree or not being able to shut down and hit a car? I'm going to go with a heart attack. I'm done before I get to the okay. end. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Third option. <laughs> yeah. I don't want either. Yeah. I actually had a friend of mine go that way, older guy, mm-hmm. but he died in the car that way. He had a heart attack. Oh, that sucks. By the time I got to the end, he was done. So it's a good, beautiful way to go, though. I, Doing yeah, what you sure. love. Doing yeah. what you love, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So he was an older gentleman and long, long history in drag racing. So, yep. Why not? Who, uh, I guess would be on your Mount Rushmore of motorsports or of, I guess anything, but motorsports since that's your, my stepdad, your stepdad. Yeah. We've had a tumultuous, tumultuous. I don't know. We've had a rough relationship throughout the years of racing, but he's always been my best friend. And, um, apart from Sarah and I, you know, I grew up with him since I was five. He met my mom, they married. Uh, I took his last name. He's my dad for all, you know, he's always been my dad, my dad, my real dad died. Uh, quite a few years ago, but um, and we've raced together the whole entire time, and then we drifted apart because of racing and went our separate ways for a while, which I regret. Um, but things happen, and we talk. We talk today. You know, it's not the same anymore. But yeah, that's that's my number. I used to say, if I could be half as good as my dad, I'd be I'd be a really good driver, and I think I, I definitely met that. You know? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever placed bets? On or against him? No. No? No. Are you just saying that because he's here? No. Or? no. <laughs> what about life insurance? Uh, well. I have life insurance. Yeah, it's a big joke, actually. Yes. Yeah. I think it expires like 63. I'm like 62 and a half. I'm pulling the plug. We're going to cash in. <laughs> There's no point in paying into that thing the whole time and not getting something out of it. Yeah. We've got this timed out. So. <laughs> All right. um, Have you guys ever gone through a rough patch in your marriage? And can you share how not only did you two get through it, but grew in your relationship because of it? Not today. (laughs) We haven't gone through a rough patch today. Today's good. Today was good. Today's great. She she gets really upset with me when I'm really happy and I'm just like, I just love you. And and she's like, we just had a two hour long fight. And I'm just like, giving her a hug and talking nice about her on the podcast. She's like, say <laughs> something mean. <laughs> it's not saying something mean. It's acknowledge what just happened. No. Like, I'm still traumatized. <laughs> <sighs> what would you guys say is your love language? Mine is touch and words of affirmation. Okay. I feel like that's very on par for almost every man. Yeah. I kind of feel like it's the same for me. Um, I like hugs, a lot of hugs. And he gives me a lot of words of affirmation. That's good. Time, like uh, time was your thing too, right? Just quality time. Quality time, I think. Wasn't that one of yours? Maybe not. I don't know. No. Yeah, because you don't get, I'm traveling all the time, so that's not it. Nope, that's not it. What What about acts of service, maybe? Not really. It's basically just quality or uh, touch touch and and words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. He like for some re- to me. So he doesn't believe in love language, period. And I've tried having this conversation with him. So I wanted to restart the conversation by seeing and showing that it is not a foreign concept. You're leveraging your gifts yeah. to <laughs> yeah. imply yeah. your like wants on your <laughs> Drew here. Yeah. He, he yeah. doesn't believe it. What is your love language? Um, complexity. <laughs> That's an asshole. That one. <laughs> Probably acts of service. I've always mm. said that my favorite thing that he does for me, and he just started doing like this past year, mm-hmm. is driving the kids to school for me. Mm-hmm. That, that is way, not just in the past this, year. This past school year was the first time that you had ever done that for me, and I have never had somebody else take my kids to school. And so we obviously used to live in Leland. So that was Mm -hmm. an hour drive. And so that was an hour every morning that I just got to sip Mm -hmm. and drink my coffee and just, ah, and not sit in the traffic. Now it's 30 minutes because we live closer and it's even less than 30 minutes round trip, right? Depends on which school you're talking about and which days. (laughs) 
Okay. Yeah. Now there are two different schools, so yeah. it's a little bit different also, but I've always said that that is my, I'm thankful so, and grateful for when he does do that for Cooper me. Cooper and I actually changed our gym membership for two reasons. One was the other gym we had to drive past the school and then come back so we could shower and then go back to school, which is at UNCW. Mm. Now we can just go to school. He can shower there. I could drop him off and bring his gym bag back. Nice. And then we haven't done, we just signed up for this new gym last week. So it'll be next week when we start. Well, yeah, because I'll still be in school. Mm -hmm. The other ones will be on fall break and that'll be our little experiment phase. We'll be doing that. Right on. But he, uh, he made the mistake of antagonizing me last week. Oh yeah. What did he say? No, just remember what he was talking about. We need to do arms. We need to do arms. So he doesn't, he doesn't fully grasp the concept of, you know, working specific muscle groups and, and how you stagger, you know, legs mm -hmm. versus doing chest and triceps versus shoulders and, and biceps and things like that. And he just wanted to just do arms. And I was like, he, he spammed me in my text messages. <laughs> he put it on the family calendar. Yeah. All arms. So, yeah. So we did. I, I, I religiously, anytime I go back to the gym after any amount of break, it's Always leg day is the first thing I do. Okay. It's, it, I know it sucks, but I know like if I can get through leg day, then it's, it's all downhill yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So smoked his ass on leg day. <laughs> and then he was talking about arms the entire We walked out because there's like two or three steps when you walk out of the gym. And he's like, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> that's a good workout yeah. day right there. <laughs> and, and, and it was, it was also one of those things where we were only in there for like, 35, 40 minutes, you know, not a lot yeah. of time, which to him, cause he doesn't, he's still learning a lot sure. of it. You know, oh, we didn't, we weren't in there long enough. Dude, that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're focusing on, you know, form and function and working on your stabilizer mm -hmm. muscles and making sure that you use the equipment correctly and you understand the concepts and, you know, getting your feet positioned correctly and all this stuff. And so he's doing, he wanted to do lighter weight. You know, he wasn't trying to attack heavyweight right mm -hmm. off the bat. But I'm telling him, dude, you can do a little bit heavier. You can do a little bit heavier. And then he was building his confidence. He's like, okay, yeah, I get it. I understand it now. And yeah, we walked out of there and he's like, should we do a little bit more? We should go hit another thing. I'm like, nope, you're good mm -hmm. for today. And we walked outside. He's like, uh, uh, yeah. my legs. Uh, and <laughs> so we got here, you know, we took our protein shake and took some glutamine and stuff. And he was fine. And then he wanted to do arms the next day. Like, fine, whatever. We're not going to do my normal routine. You want to do arms, we're going to do arms. We walked out there, and he's like, I can't <laughs> lift my arms. It's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he learned. Yeah. So, and I, it was probably better that he asked for that and had that that one time because I think that helped him understand that um, the way that we do our progressions and the way that I go through my routine – is to both hit goals, but also reduce any downtime or any other like bad physical impacts. Like, just, you know, you have an elbow injury of some kind or whatever. Now you can't do shoulders. You can't do chest. You can't mm -hmm. use that arm really. And now you can do what core legs, maybe some accessory muscles, cardio, all because you had a, maybe a small injury that doesn't necessarily fully impact all of your muscle sure. groups, but you're, he's 14 years old and I'm 36 years old. I can't afford to get injured. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get injured because that has long-term implications on the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he, it actually seems like it clicks with him. It, he wants to do things and I do it his way just enough so you'd be like, okay, I don't want to do that again. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back yeah. to doing it your way. Yeah, smart. Yeah. And eventually I'll lose the way back off. Takes time. Consistency and mm -hmm. intensity. Well you've been saying that for four years. And I haven't been consistent. Or intense, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I had I had back to back surgeries. I had uh spinal surgery and ten days later I had a left inguinal hernia repair. Jeez. And I put on because I couldn't move, I couldn't walk. I was reliant on what people would bring to me and I was on uh, convalescent leave and they wouldn't let me leave country to come back to the U S wow. 
So I couldn't be around friends or family. I was basically on bed rest for 45 days because the only way I could walk, I could get around was on crutches. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I literally was just eating pizza and junk food and whatever people were willing to bring to me Mm -hmm. and put on a ton of weight and then turn around. My unit was like, Oh, we're going to send you to EFMB. If you're not familiar with that, it's the expert field medical badge competition or whatever you want to call it. And I was like, um, I'm like trying to walk again and you guys want me to be able to ruck 12 miles and, you know, complete a PT test and do all of these other tasks. It's three weeks long. And I had already had a lot of issues with this unit and this command. And there was a change of command while I was on convalescent leave. So I was like, okay, new leadership, whatever, you know, I'm going to actually try and impress these guys. The, if the old leadership would have been there, I'd been like, fuck it, fuck you guys. I don't even want to be here. You guys are treating me like shit. I'm a medic, right? Working for MPs. And they treated me like shit the entire time I was there. Hmm. And then the new leadership, change of command happens and everything. And these guys, you know, seem like they actually like their soldiers. They want to be there. And so it just completely changed everything in my mindset. And I lost all the weight. My company commander personally did PT with me every single day until nice. I went to yeah, four months. Hmm. PT with me every day, went That's to the gym. Cool. Yeah. Oh. I went to EFMB the first time after that and I failed because it's a perfectionist course and I'm not always a perfectionist. But yeah, just being in that kind of environment, you can tell it's it's always easier to be there with the guys who want to be there, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know this probably from the Air Force as well. Um, were you an officer the entire time? Or? No, 13 years officer, seven years enlisted. Started out enlisted, obviously. Yeah. Which one did you like better? Uh, honestly, enlisted. Yeah, that's where my heart is. Yeah. I like the money of being an officer. I get to fly <laughs> an airplane as an officer. So, mm-hmm. And I have amazing friends as officers as well. But yeah. it, it's definitely uh, my heart's on the east side. So the the... The thing that I think really sucks about the military and you might see both sides of this being an officer is the, like the rules against like fraternization and stuff like that. I I understand it for relationships, right? Especially if you're in the same unit and everything like that. But if you're actually trying to build a bond and camaraderie with the guys that are in your unit, Mm -hmm. you should be able to go to the bar together once in a while. You should be. We did in the air force anyway. Yeah, because the air crew, you have to, right? So yeah. we travel as a team, you know, in a C-17, you have uh, three officers and a couple enlisted loadmasters, and yeah, we'd always hang out together. Yeah, the Army, I guess maybe not every unit, but a lot of units are sticklers about it, you know? like Yeah, different different style of war fighting, though, right? Yeah. So I, I get it a little bit. You need to have that discipline. You need to have that chain of command very... I mean, it's not. it's no different. There's still a, a chain of command when we're flying airplanes, but it's a little bit different. So essentially what we're talking about is your boss's boss is not allowed to be your friend at all for any reason. You're not allowed to date your boss's boss. You're not allowed, you're not allowed to date your boss. You're not allowed to date your subordinate. You're not allowed to be seen within 10 feet of them walking down the sidewalk. It's just, and, but when I was at RTB, it was a little bit different. There was still a lot of that was still there, but we had what we call big boy rules. And, uh, you know, we didn't do like formation PT. It was not like being in the military. It was more like being in a special operations unit. Mm. Everybody has the responsibility. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do. As long as you don't ever fuck up, sure. do whatever. Pass your PT test, pass your quals, be there on time, do your job, and nobody will ever mess with you. Well, and that's the big difference between the branches, right? So I mean, between Marines, Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, they're all different. And in that, if you if you know somebody who is a Marine and that is your only perspective of what military service is about, then you're very, you know, you're looking at it very close-minded because Air Force is completely different. Navy, that's why they don't like Air Force guys because we have great facilities to oh sleep in, great <laughs> dining facilities, totally different life, right, yep. than a Marine versus Army versus Navy versus Coast Guard. They're all completely different. So... You know, for anybody who's considering like military service, you you really need to know who you are as a person and what you want to do. If you want to be in a tent fighting mm-hmm. close quarters in a tank, then you need to focus on Army and Marines. 
you know, but if you want a little more cush, go to nice places, mm-hmm. have more of like a <laughs> steak and lobster, you know, maybe Air Force is your style. Yeah. I guess Space Force is a new thing too. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the latest branch. So, and my family has served in all of them. I finished it out with Air Force. I was the first officer in my family. Um, and now Space Force is out. So mm-hmm. we're hoping somebody, one of our kids or mm-hmm. their kids will join Space Force. Cash, the youngest, is diehard World War II um, historian. He, that kid, he's eight years old. Mm-hmm. And he can tell you everything about every theater of conflict, every specific battle, who was there, what unit was there, what, you know, uh, machinery they used, everything, everything. He can tell you so many details. And you're like, how do you, you know, he'll be like, man, yeah, there was a, in this one battle, the Germans had, the, the tiger and it was driving this way and the Americans shot it right here and that's how they found the vulnerability. And I'm like, hmm. when, when were you inspired to like go down this path? Yeah. Cause there's a, there's a trope about uh, men over 35 and it's typically you either make smoking meats and grilling your entire personality or world war two, yeah. but it's not typically an eight year old who does yeah. that. Yeah. So he's already grill master yeah. and he knows every, he knows more than probably a legitimate like war historian or a, you know, a curator, a museum curator or something. I took all the kids last summer up to Fayetteville and we hit three of the war museums up there. Two of them on post. I took them to the, um, Airborne Special Operations Museum. I took them to the JFK Museum, and I took them to the one that's actually in downtown Fayetteville. And the at the the one in downtown Fayetteville, one of the curator guys was following us around. He was kind of like standing off, but he would come in and interject and stuff. And after like the second or third exhibit, he realized Cash was his man. <laughs> That's awesome. They were just buddy buddy going through there. He's like, "Hey, have you ever seen this?" And you're and- taking him back next week during fall break, right? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's he, cool. He's you know he's like, "Oh yeah, I know about this. I know." About-. There there were a lot of things because you know they have other wars in there. They have World War One. They have Vietnam. You know they mm-hmm. have modern conflicts and stuff that he really doesn't know as much about. He also doesn't care at all about anything modern. Mm-hmm. If you try and put a video on for him or buy him a toy, he's like, "No, it's not cool." Mm-hmm. He's like, That's "I want." Cool. I want a Panzer, or I want a, hmm. um, uh, oh my gosh, why can't I think of his name? Patton, not Patton. What's the uh, the other tank commander from? If Cash was here, then yep. he would be chastising you right now. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. This is, this is so terrible. disappointed, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Sherman. Andrew. Sherman. There you go. There you go, Sherman. Yeah. We, have, we have these RC tanks out in the garage right now. They're like this big, and they have metal tracks and shoot little... Uh, airsoft bbs okay and they drive up and down all kinds of stuff they have like smoke screens they have sound effects they have little machine guns on them Mm, the the turret fully does full 360 and you can pivot the gun and everything up and down yeah that is cool well we're gonna have to wrap it up a little bit so we're gonna get your final questions and uh Skedaddle. We're going to hit the jets and blast out of here. Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess one last question. Um, what do you hope that you have taught your children to better serve them in their future? Well, when Brianna was young, I, t- I made her this because I like to paint. Mm-hmm. So I painted her this thing and it had like um, a dandelion and the little dandelions were just floating away and each one had a word. And it's like, I am brave, I am loved, I am smart, all these sayings. Mm-hmm. And um, and I just like would make her read that. Like she would, she would ask me certain question. I'm like, look at that, what does that say? And then, so she's a very strong woman who knows which, who she is. She doesn't need anybody's approval. And that's why I did it. It's because I don't want her to want anybody's approval. She could be whoever she wants and do whatever she wants, and she does. That's good. And so it hasn't been as easy with Jaden. He doesn't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, But that's kind of like we just want them to be, you know, able to be good adults. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so I feel like we've done really great with Brianna. And Jaden's still young, so... 
it's this yeah. Thing. I kind of have a philosophy. I've thought of it as like kind of a triangle. Um, at the top is love God, mm-hmm. love yourself, and love others. Mm-hmm. And if you can do those three things in life, you've done it right. You know, love God, whatever that means for yourself. You know, we don't necessarily push religion on our, our kids, but we do expose them to it, and we have a belief, and they've found belief for themselves that works for them. And for everybody, that could mean something different. Mm-hmm. Loving yourself, you know, if you love yourself, I mean, that is so important, right? That brings confidence and joy and happiness in life. And loving others, that's just taking care of your community and being a good friend and being a good husband or being a good wife and being a good parent, right? And so if you do those three things, I don't think you can go wrong in life. I mean, I don't I don't know what else there really is that you could you could fail in that. So I've tried to impress that upon our kids, you know, or try to. Um, I've failed in all of those throughout the years. We all have, right, yeah, if we're honest. Perfect. But it's just work in progress. You know, if we could all wear a shirt, that is, that's what I love is work in progress. Yeah. Yep. No one wants me to get that tattooed on my forehead. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> just backwards so you can see it in the yeah. mirror. Oh, yeah. exactly. yeah. Well, yeah. thank you both. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah. No, we really enjoyed it. This is awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Did, did you guys hear what uh, Larry wants to do tomorrow? He's going to wax your nose hair. Yeah, yeah. So it's fantastic. As I said, you can't even see it on the camera. But yeah. Is he really coming in to do it tomorrow? I texted him to follow up to see if he was still going to do it, but you know how you know how busy Larry is. Larry's very busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, Larry's, Larry's an amazing human being. Yeah, we'll yes. see. And apparently a great nose hair waxer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, little known he, things about Larry. he was going on and on. Yeah. He is excited. Yeah. I mean, he was asking if we knew the different kinds of wax. I'm like, dude, do I look like the kind of guy that knows anything about wax? <laughs> That's, this surprises me about Larry. Yes. Little known things yes. about Larry. Yeah. He's learning something new. Yeah. Aficionado of nose hair waxing Who would have i'm excited i'm going to assist in ripping them out individually <laughs> Individual, oh, this, Weezer. this is gonna be great mm-hmm. did you hear the story about the butthole stuff i don't Just, know <laughs> okay i'm gonna say yes so that i don't have to <laughs> ask, <laughs> heard it ask, ask him about it sometime ask him about it sometime <laughs> You're gonna be like nope i don't want to be part of your family <laughs> well i didn't know that he used to own a salon i didn't either until that yeah, yeah. Larry I'm, owned a salon. I didn't yeah, know. Okay. it mind boggled me. Was this in the prison? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no. So so he waxes his wife because oh, wow. that's what he knows. Okay. Mm. And very interesting. That's what she was telling us about her oh, butthole. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you'll hear that story now sometime. I guess yeah. so, especially because I'll be asking about it. <laughs> Well, thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, yeah thanks, for yeah. Coming. Yeah, thanks for having us out on Saturday. It was awesome. Yeah, um, enjoyed it. JT, if you happen to be watching this, or Jason Van Camp, if you happen to be watching this, anybody. Um, anybody. He is a <laughs> model citizen, obviously. <laughs> and <laughs> Let's not go that far. Yeah. They, <laughs> Somebody <laughs> out there's phone's ringing off the hook. Now be like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> they, they, need, they need some sponsors for this. It, it, it is a show. It is awesome. I already yeah. told them that, you know, Pastrana, JT, you guys, maybe. Well, they, they said potentially because they're doing some licensing stuff. I don't know the legalities. Yeah, you I threw it at them. Yeah. I threw it at them, and I was like, hey, maybe invite JT and Pastrana out there because there's some lunatics, and they would do that. They would take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, you got to talk David. You know, I just show up and drive the thing. I'll yeah. hold on. Yeah. yeah. We'll skate with a jet engine, and it's like Wiley e. Coyote strapped in the <laughs> rocket. Love it. Actually, so... We will wrap this up, but I wanted to ask you one question. Have you ever done it on a tarmac? Like, or do you have to be on prep? No, it can be anywhere. It okay. just, in this, you know, we are non-sponsored yeah. at this point. I mean, very, they're, they're, I take that back. Everything branded is sponsoring and they've done a fantastic job. There's also some other supporters on their, on the Dothan Motorsports that, and they're working on others as well. So what I would say is at the moment it's, it's a show that we put on the tracks support us. You know, they pay to have us there. Right. And that, that helps them make a living doing this. If we're sponsored, we can go to so many other venues, right? You can go to air shows, you can go to anywhere where it's closed off and it's safe being the most important part. Um, we can do static shows where we just start the engine and we do flames or whatever or pops. Um, 
we can do anything, anything and anything that you can imagine really with the jet cars, but it's getting that, that support and that sponsorship to be able to do those things. Um, but yeah, it'd be great. I would, I would love to do corporate events where we just go and talk to employees and inspire, you know, meeting with kids or trying to inspire kids in high schools and junior highs and college or whatever, you know, we're up for it all. So yeah, it's just getting that, that financial backing to be able to uh, do those things more, be more flexible for that. Yeah. So for everybody watching and listening, we will have all of the links that we talked about for all this stuff in the descriptions, pinned comments, everywhere else. We'll share it all on social media as we get to that. Um, the video from the track, I'll probably put that out as a little teaser video as well, because I have two. I have one from the grandstands and I have one from Sam right there. And you guys will see how it caught me off guard because I had no idea <laughs> what I was getting into, and it's awesome. And if anybody else ever has the opportunity for that experience, Nona went and stood on the side. Mm -hmm. I did. She could have been out. She was afraid of losing her shoes, but. What? <laughs> no, I just didn't feel like I was, I wasn't worthy to be out there. That, I just, I, it's not my show, so I shouldn't be out there. I should be in the stands watching like a just person there to view just a person there to yeah view. i do, do like the idea of being out there on the drag strip is that right yeah see i don't even know what to say because i've never been there before but it just was wrong to me it's not my thing people were looking at you which helps them look at the cars that's why they put a picture of you on their social media. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared yeah. to see this picture. I'm sure it's literally the worst picture ever. No, no. it's good. It good. All right, well, uh, <laughs> thank you guys for coming. Thank you for inviting us out this past weekend. And a blast. Yeah, look look up the schedule. Come out and say, if you saw us on this podcast, come say hi. We'll be yes. in, uh, I don't know when you're going to publish this, but. It's Thursday, hopefully. Thursday. Yep. We'll be in uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. So if you're, oh, if you're wow. in Gulfport, mm -hmm. Mississippi. If not, we're going to be in Ohio. I don't know which part of Ohio. Maybe Cleveland. We'll put a link to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we'll put a link to the there, schedule. Yeah. So our season's finishing up, but we've got a busy, busy year ahead and next year. David's got big, big plans. So I know as soon as we show the kids the video, at least two of them will be like, why don't you take us? That's yeah. not fair. Yeah. <laughs> when do we get to go? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this has been awesome. Thank you, Thank you guys for coming. And uh, we'll have you guys... Next time, we'll just pack it all up. And we'll go. Oh, yeah, that'd yeah. be good. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome, actually. Yeah. That'd mm -hmm. be really cool. Yeah. You should get David on here, too. David is oh, yeah. him and Rob yeah. are fantastic. They really uh, mm -hmm. they're good Absolutely. Folks, so. Absolutely. All right. Especially if they build a house in North Carolina like yeah. they were talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. All right. And uh, any sponsors considering us, consider them, too. Yeah. Absolutely. You got some tires. You got a jet engine. Yeah. <laughs> you got some diesel fuel? Anything. Really. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. yeah. We could sell anything. Food? An <laughs> RV? Yeah. Yep. If you have a drag strip, you just want to be like, hey. Book them in. Bring mm -hmm. bring, yeah. bring the cars here. Yeah. yeah. It'd be great. So. do anything. So. Like I said, hit them up. Find them in the links. Thanks for watching and or listening. And bye. Goodbye.